Welcome to the stream. Today we have the collaboration with Tosha. We are learning the Rook Endgames. <coughs> and there will be two parts. The first part would be learning together, something I'll be a little bit uh, giving more information, asking you about some of these ideas. And the last part would be the test, and the test will be the selected positions, the most important one, that you will be teaching us, and I'll be testing, and if necessary, making a little bit of corrections. What about the that? Test. <laughs> Yes, that seems great. Also, if the, you guys have, uh, I'm not, I know I'm the person I'm learning, but if you have any questions in the chat, you can easily say so. Then we're going to obviously talk about it. So you guys learning with me at the same time. So that's the point. Uh, okay, let's go. So I'm all yours, and uh, let's let's go. Let's, okay, okay. Let's Thank you very much for <coughs> being with us, guys. Thank you very much, Tosia, for accepting the invitation, and I hope you have a great time. At the same time, we are just providing interesting content and educational stuff for our audience. And in the meantime, see how Rook Games may be managed. <coughs> what about that? Ready? Yeah, that's all good. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. I can't wait. <laughs> okay, we have the first position, and I'll be just showing you the position and asking some of the questions. For example, if it is uh, white to move, how white should uh, manage the position to make a draw? Okay, so I am white and I'm the weaker side. Uh, I... Well, I definitely have to keep the rook on the first rank because mm -hmm. otherwise there'll be some checkmates. My king is very limited, so I can't play with my king on g2 or h2 at all. So that rook has to stay here because I will lose if I move the rook somewhere. Yeah. Uh, you know, higher on the board. So, and the king obviously has to say those two squares, g1 and, sorry, are they a different color? g1 and h1, because that's the only way to stop the pawn, h-pawn to promote. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And what about black? How black should be able to try to win this position, if any? Um... Well, I mean, I don't think Black can win this position. Mm -hmm. But what would be the attempts? Attempts, I'm like, how Black should try to win? It, it doesn't matter it's winning, but how Black could uh, try to win this position? Um, so, well, Black, there's two ways, two, two things I'm looking at at the moment. So, like, I would maybe try to consider Rook on B. Uh, rook on it is B. the second rank, by the way. Mm -hmm. Second rank. Yeah, but then also I feel like if the rook goes in the b2, can we play like rook a3 or something? Mm -hmm. um, and then the king has to be pushed away because otherwise we take the pawn. Uh, so then we just go back on the, on the a1 line. But what other way? Um, well, we could play... It is the no. position that is very difficult to lose by white, therefore you may be struggling how to win I with know, black. I know, because I can't, there's no... I mean, it looks like a draw, but if I will be playing black, mm -hmm. and that will be a bullet, let's say, mm -hmm. and, you know, anything could happen, I'd be probably try to go with a, like, rook on b2 and... And I don't know, try, like, h2 or something? Mm -hmm. Or, like, even b2, rook on the g2... Um, and then, and then maybe even king on. Well, this it's a draw anyway. Yes, it's a draw. It it cannot be lost uh, with one condition. For example, as long as you are just staying rook on the last rank, and you are not allowing this trick. I mean, this is the bullet trick, of course. Therefore, don't worry. I'm just showing you just for the purpose of how it may may be lost uh, the easy way. This is the okay. checkmate, the first idea, because the rook uh, simply uh, is got got off from the first rank. And another one would be to have the pawn on h2 and the rook g1. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking, but then I always had that um, idea that the rook would just do a check on, on a2 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Therefore, uh, in, with normal play, it, it, it's not going to happen. Therefore, for example, after such stuff, it's pretty much lost due to the rook on the last rank. And what is important, if you are just having the edge pawn, the edge pawns or the rook pawns are the biggest problem for the winning side to convert. 
because you do not have the other side of the board that you can just improve with your king or with your rook and therefore the white the weaker side can draw without any effort and therefore at this moment you cannot do anything and even it is better to stay the king on the corner because if the pawn gets forward it is not with check Okay. You're not forced to get away. And that's why it's one of the motive that as long as you can, try thinking about uh, not allowing your opponent to get uh, into the seventh rank or the second rank, depending on the side with check. Because it's safer, you do not need to worry. Okay. And therefore, at this position, black cannot improve the position. They can just repeat. And if you are just going back and forth with the rook right here on one of these squares, not to blunder the rook, it cannot be won. Of course, if, okay. if black tries to make a little bit of let's say crazy attempts for example like this one you can always check and after that you grab the pawn okay therefore, yeah, no, that's what I've seen, yeah, as well. yes therefore this position cannot be won it's super easy to draw therefore we can go for the next one what about this uh, this one i mean uh, show you that a little bit of uh, let's say play just very quickly this is the attempt how they can try it if the rook stands if the rook's not defending on the third rank i mean the black rook you can just harass the king all of the time and then win the pawn right mm -hmm. and therefore if black tries to flag you for example it is one of the idea if they just uh, try to checkmate you on the on the last rank but if they leave the third rank you're attacking the king forcing the king to retreat and after king retreats you're attacking the pawn and winning it therefore pretty easy okay next one now we have the pawn that is not the edge pawn, not the rook, but the knight's pawn. What about that? Is it any difference? Okay, um, well, the difference I'm seeing first before calculating anything mm -hmm. is that the king king has that kind of, well, I would say umbrella, like, you know, has a shield from mm -hmm. any checks. Yes, from the side so, checks. Mm -hmm. So that could be an advantage, but I, let me just have a look at the position and see if I can see any variation no problem um okay so try to see what is the difference between the previous position because this way you can just uh, improve your understanding having more pieces uh, uh, let's say integrated Okay, so... What is the difference from the previous position up to this position? Even if this difference is not that big, but what are the ideas that you can um, uh, use at this position? Uh, well, I'm thinking something about rook on the g2, mm -hmm. check, yeah. and the king... Uh... Well, the king has to go on the h1 because if the king goes on f f1, mm -hmm. I have that spot for my king on the h2. Mm -hmm. That's where I want to bring yes. my king. You can bring the king closer and protect the promotion square. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's that's perfect. But the, if I am going to play rook on the g2, the white king can actually go on h1, mm -hmm. and I'm trying I, I'm trying to see if if there is a way to win this somehow mm -hmm. there are the only two two ways to lose this position first is the the, the previous one okay. being checkmated so, on the last rank what would be the other one even theoretically we do not need to make the best move at this moment in a moment we'll get into the best moves theoretically how could you lose this position by white and uh, so by white mm -hmm. But obviously, the, the, like we said, if the rook moves, but also I'm seeing something like rook on the g2, king on the h1, mm -hmm. then I can play rook on the f2, so yeah. the rook still can't move because I'm attacking with the checkmate. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's say, so either the, um, well, I don't know what's going to happen if king just goes back on the g1, but like if the rook would just move on the first rank, and the king is still on a h1. Mm -hmm. I was thinking I could play g2. Mm -hmm. And king goes back on a g1. And then I'm playing king on g3. 
And then if there's a rook on h3, I'm just playing rook on f3. Maybe let's show us this variation because mm -hmm. it will be easier for our audience. Let's say I'm just waiting for the for your moves. You're playing black. Let's just play it out. The, the stuff that you mentioned. Okay. Mm -hmm. So right. So I'm going to play here. Okay. And then king f1 or king h1. Which one would you like to test out? For your well, idea. Let's show. Let's show the first one because the f1. Um, because it's just, I think it's easier. So I want to get rid of that first. Mm -hmm. So if that happens, my plan was go to with the king on h2. Excellent. What is the threat at this moment? What is the threat? Well, obviously the rook on the g1. Yes. And this is the skewer trick. It's very common in rook end games. And this is one of the key motives if you want to win yeah. this type of end games. But also it's very, it seems very strong the way the king is on all, the opposite side of the pawn you know sorry so uh mm -hmm. i think that's very strong as well so that's why but if that happens then that's fine but if the king would go on sorry mm -hmm. um yes it is white to move and then you can just yeah pick. i got lost <laughs> once no again. problem maybe let's start with the uh, initial position rooks you want some like testing move and you, okay, you can so just i try that mm -hmm. and then we were thinking about king goes on the hate so I was calculating, I don't know, I don't know if it's correct yet. Mm -hmm. Something like rook on, uh, like rook on f2, mm -hmm. right? So if- And let's like, pretend I am just waiting for you. I'm just standing on the last rank. Okay. How could we improve the position? Well, I was thinking about this. Yeah, excellent. Mm -hmm. And, and what's I'm the continuation? going king on the g3 because if there is a check and we yes but let's pretend cover. i do not react let's pretend i am blind right i do not i do not react i'm just waiting on the last rank okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes it's good to see the weakest defense or the bad defense and see how much this defense can be improved at into the later stages Look about this. This is very important. The f1 square. If you put the rook immediately onto the f1, there is a double attack, right? Mm -hmm. But this is the square that is now covered twice by white and just once by black. Therefore, after the capture, the king recaptures the new promoted piece and it's a draw. But if you try to make it this way, if you try to make this way, then this would be winning. Can okay. you see that? For example, if you just make yeah. just the random moves to show the idea. Well, if, hold on, hold on, what happens after rook c3? Yeah, yeah, but I'm, I'm okay. just showing just the idea. Because in a moment we'll improve it, right? And mm -hmm. now, just showing the idea, and then it would be won. Because the pawn protects the rook. Yeah. Rook is attacking this attack. If you do not want to lose the rook, you must capture, and then it's winning. And it's the uh -huh. only way to lose this position. Of course, except okay. blundering the rook for free or getting checkmated. The problem with this idea is the following. That before you just make the trick on me with the skewer, now I do the same on you and you're just losing. Right? Because yeah, after no, this, I, I capture, your opponent is not going to go to promote it and I'm winning. And that's why I can, I can this is the myself doing something like that. Yeah, yeah, but it is the only way to lose. The only way to lose to yes. do not react uh, for for your opponent. And so something you can say: if I would be playing the rook on the first rank back and forth, you can do anything. Your opponent can show you that anything is a little bit extreme. Yeah. Right. Uh, Robert in the chat, my chat says that I look like I hate end games, and just want to clarify that's not true. I'm just learning, so. For me, it's, it's kind of new things, some of them. Yes, and by the um, way, we are learning. We are learning. Take notice that, guys, uh, in my chat, in, in Tosha's chat, uh, whenever we are learning, we make mistakes. It's a natural process and necessary um, component to grow. Therefore, it's perfectly fine. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So, all good. So, guys, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to say, uh, OK, let's go. So, let's, so. Is that a win or is that a draw? <laughs> yeah, it's a draw. It's a draw. It's a draw. I, I just show you <gasps> what is the way thing. to lose it, but only exclusively if your opponent will say, I'll be going back and forth on the first rank. You can do whatever you wish. And whatever you okay. wish is the extreme. And it is draw because the rook cannot make the skewer trick. And that's okay. why it's a draw. With the f pawn in a moment, it's going to be a win. In a moment, we'll see it. And for example, if we have just the play as we just want to test out, rook is going back and forth unless it is the different position. Rook is just standing on the second rank. After that, rook b1, rook g2 check. 
you need to go into the corner. Now rook check the only legal move. And now after rook step back, you are going with the rook on the last rank. Nothing changes. If the okay. pawn advance, a very important part. If the pawn advance and the king cannot get closer at this moment, you must push the king away. And after that, it is pretty easy win. Because you either cut off the king or if the king gets away from the pawn, you can just make the double attack with the rook and capture the pawn next. What about that? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. and, th there, and that's why this position is a pretty easy draw. And the only idea that I show you, you can lose. It's just uh, waiting and do not do, do not do anything if you have the opportunity to push back the king. Okay. And therefore, at this moment, it's a pretty easy draw. Nothing can be done from Black's part to win this objectively because the two tricks are in this position. I mean, the, the normal trick, if I can say that, because the, the third one with the skin and the rook here and the pawn g2 was the extreme, right? Therefore, this extreme. The only two tricks to lose this position, to step back from the last rank, not protecting from the checkmate threat. This is the first one. And the second okay. one is to get tricked with the skewer, pushing away too much the king into f1. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, like a pawn kind of G and B and A and H. So yeah. Kind of a draw in that situation. Yes. Only when the king, a white king, is so close to the pawn. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, there are only two, two, two instances if the pawn is on the sixth rank, king is next to the pawn, that are drawn. The H and G, of course, in the normal, normal position, the rook spawn and the bishop spawn. And at the same time, from the other side of the board, if you have the king, uh, let's say on the h6 pawn, pawn would, uh, sorry, on the a6, a3, and the king would be b3, it would be the same. It would be just okay. the mirrored position, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I guess it's a pretty simple. And now if you get into the next position, because now we are having the pawn that is the bishop's pawn, or you can say the f pawn, the c pawn, now what would be the procedure to continue to win this position by black? Because it's winning by black no matter what white does. What okay, is the plan? So the whole plan that you already mentioned, the trick about it is that we have a bit more space on the other side of the pawn, which would, does that mean that if, whoever, if we would go on rook h2, we have that motive of yes. rook h1 mm -hmm. and that's, we want to get that rook. Yeah, the skewer motive. Yeah, so this is good because our goal always was go on the first rank mm -hmm. uh, in that situation. But before we couldn't because Rook was kind of controlling the whole rank. But now Rook only control one side where it doesn't control the other side. Yes, that's correct. And now if I, for example, step back Queen G1 not allowing you to make this trick, how would you continue? Well, I can still play rook on the H. Oh, no, hold on, hold on. I might get too far. Because I was thinking, sorry, I was no thinking problem. of playing rook H2 and trying to play F2 mm -hmm. to push the king on the F1 and then be able to do rook H1. But I'm just not sure if I'm going to play rook on H2. I'm seeing, I'm looking if the rook can actually go on A3 to disable. Yes, Me great the point. That's what yeah. I wanted to ask. Yes, that's right. If you put the rook h2 and the king is not on f1 already, I am just putting the rook on a3 and you cannot make this trick with winning the rook for two reasons. First of all, there is no rook on the first rank. Second of all, you cannot make illegal moves with the pawn because the pawn is pinned. Okay. And therefore, you will not be able to win this way, even though the position is still winning. And how to make it a little bit more precise because the idea is great, but a little bit of precision is needed at this point. Okay, so actually, I think that it's better to do a check on the g2 first. Uh huh. So if the king actually goes on the h1, then we have move rook h2 with the tempo. Yes. So it's almost stronger. Yes. And then if the king is on g1, what, what next? Well, now we can go to f2 and rook h1. Yeah, the f pawn is not pinned as the previous position we had. Therefore, after the check, the only legal move is to step back. And then we use yeah. the trick okay. of the skewer, as we just mentioned, no matter if they can be protecting rook or not, it's winning anyway. And what about this position? Did you understand the difference between the edge pawn on the A or the uh, H file and the uh, knight's uh, pawn with the B or G, with yeah, the bishop's we, pawn? 
we have that space for the rook to mm -hmm. kind of maneuver on the other side, mm -hmm. but before we didn't. Yes, yes, and therefore this is the win, no matter who is on the move, because at this moment, the only defense for white, if white would like to survive, would be to make the checks from the rear, right? Okay, so if I would want to defend it with white, I would try to put a rook behind. Yes, yes, if this if this is possible, but before, before, I mean before reaching this position, because if yeah, you'd like to make late. this plan, you are just checkmated, and this is very important due to this pawn, I mean pawn, I mean controlling of the e2 square. Okay. Because at different type of positions that we'll be analyzing, there could be the possibility that it looks like a mate, or this is the mate thread that you may see, oh my goodness, I am just winning, but it's not. It looks like mate, but it's not. At this moment, it is a technical mate, because the king cannot get outside on the second rank due to the pawn, and therefore you cannot make this plan. Of course, in a bullet, if you have just one or two seconds, if you just try to think that your opponent will be going, for example, with rook h2 idea, you can just try it, right? But on bullet. I do not mean on a serious game, but rather with bullet okay okay yeah. and therefore at this position this is win who, uh, no matter who is on the move and even if the king is on the f1 g1 h1 it doesn't change uh, uh, anything because the right. farther the king back from the pawn first of all the pawn is going closer with the king's assistance as you just mentioned and the second of all if the king is pretty much far away from the pawn there is the trick of the skewer exchanging or winning the rook and then promoting the pawn into the last rank Okay. What about yeah. that? So, okay, I think I understand that. So mm -hmm. that's... Any questions, okay. any comments about this position, or would like to go to the next one? Well, I don't have any questions. If there are any questions from the, the chat, chat, yes, you can put them if you wish. Guys, do you have any questions? Is there any anything that you want to see on the chessboard or you don't understand? So, uh, let me know, then I will we'll discuss it. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go for the next one. Now we have the position that probably you'll see many times, but there is one important uh, element that we need to address, and in a moment probably it is going to be revealed. What does this position look like, and maybe what is the name, if you remember? Oh, is that going to be the um, Philidor? Yes, the Philidor. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And what because is the... the yeah? Philidor, sorry, just to clarify yeah. that, right? Mm -hmm. The Philidor is when... Um, because we're playing white, white at the moment, yes, right? Yes, we are playing white, so are defending... and black is going down with the pot. Mm -hmm. That's Philidor, but if we would be playing black, and the king would be someone for the white, that'd be Lucina, right? Uh, Lucina would be a different type of, because Lu okay. Lu Lu Lucina, by the way, Lucina, yes, it would be, but Lucina would be a little bit different, because most but of the time... Would... The pawn is on the seventh rank, king is blocking the pawn, and then it's some like Lucina, and Lucina is building the bridge. Yeah. And okay. therefore, with Lucina, it's good to remember about building a bridge. And with Philidor, oh, no, yeah. there is a, there is another idea. What is the idea about Philidor? Philidor is the te technical name about the inventor or the, or the guy who popularized that. But what is the idea with the end game to draw it if White is on the move? Um, so the idea, if I remember the word, but probably not. I was there just rook on a tree to try to block the king from reaching the third uh, file, and then if black play like let's say e3 mm -hmm. if i push the pawn yeah it doesn't have that umbrella for the king yeah. anymore yeah so then we can go on the like rook on a8 and mm -hmm. try to check from the distance yeah mm -hmm. and okay. what what are the black's chances to avoid the checks after they push the pawn are there any um... chances to avoid the checks or not Let's pretend that we push the rook on the third rank, they push well, the pawn. Well, could kind of try the bridge, but it wouldn't work in that situation because, because our king is mm -hmm. so advanced. Yes. I mean, and, so close to the pawn. Yeah, and you recognize very nicely the bridge. The bridge would be, and the bridge idea actually, would be that, uh, the same idea, but if the king would be reversed. If yes. they could be reversed, then we push the pawn, and we are just creating the bridge position. Excellent! You just know a lot about end games. I thought. See, I, I, I learned. I was doing my homework, but don't say that yet, because that's it. That's all I know. Okay, okay, <laughs> but but I am impressed. I am impressed. And now this position uh, and uh, the idea about the Philidor is known some, sometimes as the uh, as the sixth rank defense. Of course, in the, in the same time, this is the third rank, but many times it's on the sixth due to the white is pushing for the win. 
and therefore black is on the sixth rank defense. Therefore, okay. Philidor, sixth or third rank defense. And if you are just talking about Lucina, Lucina is the building bridge position. Okay. Mm -hmm. For if you are playing black, right? Mm -hmm. And let's say, can we go back where yeah, of the course. rookie turn one? Yeah, of course. And imagine this is a black smooth at mm -hmm. the moment. Yeah. Would that change anything? Or not. Yes, it would change a lot because at this moment I will not allow you, I will not allow you this idea. At the same time, I would not allow you to make this idea. For example, okay. I would push the kin, and after you push the rook check, I am blocking and I am threatening checkmate the one that we just mentioned in the previous example. Okay. And this would mean a lot. At this type of position, one move, uh, let's say, difference or something like who is on the move can change the outcome. The final oh, result. Okay. Therefore, it's very important not to not to mess it, not oh, to mess right. it. So, if I be black, my first move is that king, king on f3. Yes, king f3. Okay. Because after rooks on the sixth rank, you are blocking with the pawn and threatening checkmate, checkmate, and your opponent doesn't have the time with these umbrella checks. Okay, well that's very interesting actually. Because mm -hmm. therefore, feel free that. to ask any questions. I'll try to address all of them one by one. And now, okay. with the idea, what would be the proper defense, uh, the, the one that you explained. After the pushing the pawn, we are going the rook on the last rank. And now the idea, not the idea, the question, why the rook goes to the last rank? Is it better to get the rook on the 8th, 7th, 6th, 5th, 4th, on the 3rd? Why the last rank? Because many players just make this automatically. And all of the time, the players are asking why the rook is going that far away. What is the idea general, not just in this endgame, but in all, all of the rook endgames? Why rook is going that far? Well, it's just going to be far away from the king. So in case, um, mm -hmm. you know, we don't want any move with tempo because uh, every tempo is very, very valuable mm -hmm. in the endgame. So, so it just... I don't know, it's more safe, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, it's more safe and there is less chance that the rook would be lost, first of all. Okay. Because if you have the rook very close to the king, let's say right here, the rook would be lost. But if you have rook on this red squares, the rook cannot be lost as long as you not allow the king to make at least three or four moves. Okay. And this is the point, because not always yeah. rook needs to be that far, but in the majority of cases, the farther away the rook, the better. The better just because of these checks that your that your king cannot chase the rook that quickly and you can just make the reign of checks without any trouble okay what about I that i think well yeah no that's good so we just mm -hmm. that's just a draw yes this is a pretty easy draw thank you very much guys for being with us we are having the collaboration with tosha and therefore if you want to check out tosha channel I'm just uh, pasting, give me a second, I'm just pasting the link to your channel. Uh, sorry about a little bit of delay. I'm just trying to have a look about the link for your channel. Give me a second. Okay, because... and don't worry, and also a mm -hmm. new one in my chat. I'm having, a, I'm actually training end games for the last two weeks, I would say, or even longer. And the uh, Tinker teacher, he's very good at explaining, and he offered to explain it to me on stream, which is great because we can all learn. And I know a little bit, but I don't know everything, so I am uh, really happy to learn more because I need this to stick in my head. Yeah, well. and very important, uh, learning is one part, the other part is to rep repetition. Repetition is the mother of skill, if they can say in Greek yes. or Latin, therefore you need to practice that, because I have been, uh, I, I have devoted so far 500 hours to Rook Endgames, and I just scratched the surface, and I'm not kidding. Even though I devoted a lot of hours, but I didn't have the modern tools as you have nowadays as engines, teachers, YouTubers, streamers, and so on. And I, I, needed, I needed to do most of my work by my own. And nowadays I'm just doing the project with my community to devote one year for the endgame part, just full 12 months into this project. And we are just learning all of the types of endgames. We started with the pawn endgames, now we are into the bishop endgames in one module, and with rook endgames the other module. And I uh, promised my uh, community that we'll be learning at least 500 rook endgames. At least 500. Okay, that's really good. Right, I have one question from the chat. Uh -huh. So what will be if we go king f3 as a first move from black? If black oh, that's what, yeah, 
let's and let's yes let's then, uh, and then y plays rook a8 mm -hmm. yes and if for example they're going on on this one then we are just giving the idea of the short side and the long side about the pawn yeah there is this will be in a moment okay. we'll be discussing that and this is going to be really difficult really difficult because many times if you're if you do not have the uh, rook on the proper side of the board proper side of the board it's lost for example uh, if the pawn is right here we have just two two parts of the board the long side and the short side the long side means there are more squares to the edge of the board and the short side less squares to the edge of, edge of the board therefore the blue ones is the long side the green ones is the short side and in a moment we'll see how it is trans transforming into this one because in a moment we'll be learning about that one therefore it's the, the question for the next part is that okay, okay. Yeah, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. And therefore, at this moment, the simplest idea to use this uh, advantage for white is to cut off the king. Take notice if the king cannot uh, cannot uh, support the pawn, then the pawn cannot advance. And very important, the king and the pawn are standing on the same uh, file. And therefore, the pawn cannot advance as long as the king is not chased from the first rank. And, okay. for ex and very important, if black would just attack uh, white, we are going back and forth on these two squares in front of the pawn. Even oh. if black would try to make different ideas, right? Okay. The only way yeah. to lose it is to is to just make a trick with the skewer. You needed to get into the third rank. Of course, it's illegal, but in a general sense. But if you, let's say, just stay on the third rank, your opponent attacks, you're going back and forth. All right. What about that? Well, that's not good, is it? for us no no i mean uh, I, I mean it's perfectly fine but i mean this is another idea that we need to discuss because it's draw okay it's okay, perfectly it... fine we didn't spoil anything by white because white needs to make this idea to draw the position we need to cut off the third rank or the sixth rank depending on the perspective as long as the pawn advances if the pawn does not advance we are just giving two ideas first idea to, is to make the rook on the sixth rank except of blundering except okay. of blundering therefore we cannot get there on the blue square sorry this one is blue is one uh, except of blundering therefore we are just giving these three squares at this moment yeah or we can just get back and forth with the king if it okay. is possible if it because is possible if the, if the pawn push on e3 we, we yes don't. we're fine because yes then then black D8. help us immediately yes they yeah, help us okay. immediately and therefore i would say it is automatic draw therefore you do not need to think yeah. an, about anything after so pushing the pawn. Guys, just to explain to guys, basically if the pawn will push on e3 and the black doesn't have that spot to hide behind the pawn, it's an easy draw when the rook can get in the, the back rank and then we're just going to be checking the king and the king won't be able to cover behind the pawn because the pawn will be actually standing on that square. Yes, so that's a draw. Yes, and this is the so-called uh, Reign of checks because many times it's pretty much rese rain resemble of rain of checks, right? We are just like a rain going up and down and the king cannot defend against this rain of checks, right? Okay, and therefore I'm just showing you one interesting idea For example, if the king step back one file from the pawn, you can check the king more if the king gets two files away Then the pawn is lost. It's very important if you'd like to for example play in the bu in the bullet or blitz and you need to know if you can uh, exchange the pawns by force. If the king is two files away from the pawn, we are attacking the pawn and there are two ways to defend it. First is to put the rook on the third rank and the second is push the pawn. If black okay. pushes the pawn, there is the double attack on the pawn, we immediately exchange it and after rook captures, this is a draw. And if the mm -hmm. rook gets to the third rank, with the idea yeah. of getting right here and trying to checkmate you the way that we discussed, we're going forward. That's why going back and forth uh, in front of the pawn. And then even if the king is closer, but it's not protecting the pawn. Yeah. That's so why these two files. Pawn. Yes, we just capture the pawn and trace the rook into the drawn end. Okay. Is that helpful? Yeah, no, that seems okay. I mean, I get that. So, so that's Fielder's position and that's basically mm -hmm. what we have to do. Go on a third rank. To block the king and kind of force the black to push the pawn. Yeah. But if it would be black's move, it's a different story. Yes, a different story and then black is trying to go for the win. Therefore, be careful to reach yes. this position with white to play. And if you are white, try to cut off the sixth rank or okay. the third rank, depending on the perspective. And as long as the pawn is not pushed, just going back and forth on the sixth rank. Or if it's not possible, most of the time it is, you are going back and forth with the king in front of the pawn. 
Okay. That's the simplest I, to remember. The simplest to I remember. I now understand that. Okay, mm -hmm. so we can go. Next one. Okay. And now we have another position. And what do you think about this one? Is it some like similar one or a little bit different? How would you just see the difference? How would you explain the difference? Difference. Talk about the king and the and the pawn position of the stronger side. Well, so I'm playing white, obviously, in that situation. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit different, though, because um, if I would go, let's say, rook h3 at the moment, okay? Yeah. yeah. That's not very good because the, the black just play king on the... Sorry, they just play, sorry, pawn c3, yeah, right? Yeah, after pawn c3, what happens? What is the threat? The simplest threat for black. The threat is just a checkmate. Yes, checkmate, because the king cannot get onto second rack due to the pawn that was already pushed. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if, um, if the rook will play on h1, mm -hmm. we just going to play... Um, yeah, yeah, I know, but then uh, what uh, What happens if... Oh, okay, sorry. Go on, go okay, on. So we just rook on a2 and then after king on b1, we're just going to play c2. So we're Yes, gonna... yes, fine. this is the, the idea that we mentioned about the f pawn or the c pawn, the, the bishop's pawn, and now you cannot stop the checkmate. By the way, it's very important. It's checkmate again. Again, it's not just winning the rook, it's checkmate threat. Therefore, if black wants to defend, they need to push closer. At the same time, they stop the checkmate and the skewer, but they cannot have the luxury to pin the pawn due to the rook on the last rank, and therefore pushing the pawn and uh, forcing the king to step back to allow the skewer idea, right? Yeah. And that's so, why it's winning. Okay. And therefore, so, probably I answered the question about the previous one. What happened if the, let's say, opponent can uh, push the pawn? with that check on the on the sixth or the third rank, correct? Yes. So we shouldn't play rook h3. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe I'll just give you a little bit of insight into this position and for your audience as well. Okay. Can I? Yeah, let's on. let's pretend if the king is just standing on the d5, then we're having the same position as we discussed before. Can you see that? Yeah, but that it's different because yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, just the resembles. And the position changes, changes due to the, let's say, different play. But if the king would be on the fifth rank, we are cutting off the third rank. And fourth if the rank, pawn pushes, sorry. yes, yes. If the uh, pawn pushes, then we are going with the reign of checks. Okay. And that's so why the position if, changed. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. If I would want to play now, um, actually, maybe not. Um, Oh, Try, no, trial of the ideas, there. don't worry about the, about the uh, let's say, mistakes. Mistakes are for you to learn about the ideas and see which one works, which one does not. Okay, well, if I play rook on c8 in this position. Mm -hmm. And you can do it. Okay, so I'm going to do myself. Rook c8. Mm -hmm. And why, why this move, not the other? Well, because if I'm... Um, because basically, I try to force the black to to make c3 move because my idea is to do reign of checks, right? Mm -hmm. And um, also, I didn't calculate what happens after king c3. You do not need to calculate. <laughs> it's not for calculation. Take notice yeah. in, in rook and games, then 90% of the positions that we're learning are not for calculation. There are just 5%, maximum 10% that will let you know to make a little bit of calculation. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, basically it's just um, the fact if we, if we're going to play rook b8, let's say check, mm -hmm. in the, instead of rook c8, yeah. then we give the opportunity for the king to play on c3, which is an uh, immediate uh, um, threat for the checkmate on the g1. Excellent. That's mm -hmm. not good. Mm -hmm. But it, the difference is that it, it looks kind of like a similar position, but the, the rook will be also attacking the c uh, pawn all the time. Yeah. So even if the king play on c3 now mm -hmm. we could play on, is it king on the b1 or king on d1 this is my question now we'll we'll just figure it out in a moment don't worry because okay. it's the next part therefore therefore don't worry we'll just figure it out for example yeah. if rook c8 and king c3 
we have the idea, the typical position that now it is one of the, let's say, uh, most difficult to understand if you do not get into the position a little bit deeper. But if okay. you get into a position deeper and see both solutions, you quickly understand why the concept of the short side and the long side is that much important that I, let's say, mentioned just a few positions before. Okay, that's fine. Uh, give me just a moment. I just want okay. to uh, introduce the chat to what we do. Okay. So today I'm having a lesson with Tinker Teacher. He already explained to me before, I don't know if you guys remember, how to do a night uh, uh, checkmate with Nathan the Bishop, and he was very good at it. So now he's trying to explain to me some rock and games that I've been working on. So if you have any questions, don't don't be shy and even if you think it's stupid it's not stupid so do a uh, text in the chat and then we're going to just answer your questions because you guys learning with me if you don't know that obviously so that's it um we can go back now okay and now we have the position that is very important because first of all as you just uh, noticed there's the checkmate threat and then i just mentioned before that it looks like scary Right? Because we do not have the rook that could attack the king on the third rank. We do not have the rook on the last rank, as we just mentioned before, for example, let's say here. But we have the rook in the other side of the board. And now we need okay. to introduce and explain the concept of the short side and the long side. Because now the pawn is standing on the C file and we are just giving two parts of the board. The first one okay. into the A file and the second one into the H file. And now it mm -hmm. looks pretty clear that into the uh, H file there are more squares, the one highlighted on red, than on the one highlighted on blue on the short side. Therefore, blue side at this moment is so-called short side, and the red is so-called long side. And now mm -hmm. the simple testing question, because I just mentioned that it will be the interesting questions and the testing one as well. What is the idea about the rook? Uh, sorry, about the short side and the long side, and why it is that important to remember what part uh, needs to be addressed by the king, what part needs to be addressed by the rook? What well, do you know? I would think mm -hmm. yeah, that on. short side it's for a king and the long side it's for the rook. Yeah. Because like we were saying before, I know to be out of context, but we were playing the rook on the AA to do checks. So the rook works better from the distance because, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there is no tempo. The king can get close to the rook because then we lose the tempo. The, our rook is attacked. So I would say the the longer side is for rook. Yeah, and excellent. The, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent. Great explanation. You're absolutely correct. The shorter side is for the king because king doesn't need to have too much space. King is pretty okay. comfortable just because the king is slow, slow pace, piece, something like not long range. And the rook needs to get into the long side because they, it will feel way comfortable. The rook would not be harassed by the king. At the same time, it, it's going to be the possibility to make the side checks, side checks. And that's why it's very important. For example, okay. if I have the rook right here, the rook would be attacking the king, but I can go with the king into the b4 square and these three squares would not be available for the rook but from the other point of view if i put the rook on the h3 then the king is not able to control these squares okay one second because we just got raided so hey hashtag chess i just want to say hello hello raiders hey 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 i hope your stream was great uh, my name is tosh and i live in ireland but i'm from poland i uh, play chess since i'm like eight nine years old and at the moment we actually train or think a teacher you guys can do a shout out for him we are doing a lesson of broken games i don't know if you like it but this is one of my favorites lately lately uh, so if you want to, if you're interested in that or you don't think this is your good side, you can stay here and learn with us and uh, you guys are allowed to like ask any questions in the chat so then we can explain it. So you're welcome. Okay, and now if you can see, all of the stuff I just mentioned is based on the short side and the long side. Because if the rook is on, on the h3, I mean this yeah. this uh, rank, if the rook is here, the king needs to have at least one, two, three, four square to attack it. And if the rook would be, for example, on a3, there is just one square to attack it. And that's the yeah. big difference. That's the big difference okay. because uh, then the king would be, no, sorry, the rook would be forced to move onto the square that is a pretty badly placed, and then black most often wins. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I get that. And now, so is this a draw now? Yes, this is a draw, okay. but, but you need to know how to play it out. 
because okay. black black may may seem to have a little bit of tricks that we yeah. need to be careful. Can we just go back one move? Uh, before, yeah, just of because course. Because we have new viewers, so because mm -hmm. in this position it's very important to play rook on c8. Um, because if we would play, let's say, rook on b8 check, then the king goes in the c3, and the, uh, it's maybe just so. Mm -hmm. If we play rook on the b8, the king goes on the c3, and that's not good at all for us, because uh, it's a threat of a checkmate. So that's why it's very important to go with the rook behind the pawn and put the pressure on the pawn. Yes, and that's why rook that's needs to attack the pawn. Yeah. Rook adds the pawn and take notice that the side checks would not work because of the shelter by the pawn and then checkmate threat. Yeah, that's the yeah, idea. That's another thing. Mm -hmm. So it would be too slow go from the side in this position. If the king will be like on uh, b4, mm -hmm. that, can I ask, can we go back? When yeah, the of rook course. Was on of course. Mm -hmm. uh, give me a second. Rook c8 was the last move. This one. Okay. Okay. No. So if in that position, king would be on the b4, mm -hmm. I would be white move. Yeah. Would I be able to play rook on h3? Yes. Yeah. So yes. that would change everything. It is. The it is king... the Philidor position. Philidor. Yeah, because so you are cutting exactly off the king, and the pawn. The pawn hasn't crossed the hasn't crossed the sixth rank or okay. the third rank. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's fine. So if they cross the the it's on the third rank, then we would go from behind. If we obviously that have that option, but then sorry, one more question. Yeah, yeah of course, ask. go on. So in that position, if the rook would be on the h1 mm -hmm. and it would be white move, that's a lost position. Uh, it's going to be lost position due to yeah. due to this idea that I am threatening checkmate. If the rook leaves yeah, the okay. leaves the first rank to make this check, there are no side problem. checks. And there is the trick of getting the rook the other way with the checkmate idea and the skewer. You cannot defend. There are too many okay. threats. Yeah, okay, I get that. So mm -hmm. the rook is on the h8. This is very important because it's on the other side of the board. Yes. Okay. Sorry mm -hmm. for asking. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Perfectly fine. Take notice that you can just interrupt me as many times as you wish because this is the learning process. And now rook c8 is that much important because it attacks the pawn. And in a moment, if we just, uh, let's say, make the king disappear, if the pawn yeah. move forward, we'll be attacking the pawn for the second time. And okay. that's the key. That's the key, because otherwise, if the king would be, for example, right here, if the rook would not be attacking the pawn, the pawn moves forward into the promotion with the help of the king, rook, and the pawn. Oh, right. And that's why it is that much important, even if it looks like a passive move, because some people would like to say, no, no, it's too passive, it's too passive, it's better to check the king. No, it's the opposite. With rook endgames, if you just make the wrong checks, many times you help the opponent and one, uh, let's say, slip at such type of endgames results in an immediate loss. All right. Mm -hmm. I and, think that. Mm -hmm. And that's why we reached this position. And now the concept of the short side and the long side. And as you just mentioned, rook needs to get onto the long side and king needs to get into the short side. And one, uh, let's say, simple rule to remember this, rook is a long range piece. And therefore, rook long range R R, right? Okay. R rook rook long range. Therefore, two R's. Long range. Look on the long range side, and can on the other side of the short one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can I ask? Uh, this a question. Yeah, of from course. Of course. <laughs> when are you going to create TikTok videos? Uh, are you, is it your plan in the future? I, I have just started the YouTube channel and to be honest, okay. I am just having the project about the uh, end games and actually, because I, I cannot clone myself. If I clone myself, it could be got, done tomorrow. <laughs> if I clone myself, no problem immediately. But I, I am having right now just myself and nobody else in my team except on my community uh, and i am i started the project about the end games and then the project will be la will last for at least 12 months and uh, i so just put onto the youtube too the, busy. yes okay. to busy and maybe two, okay. two less resources maybe not just business but resources right I, yeah. I do not have that much time to prepare other stuff i need to prepare for the streams to show the end games at the same time i'll be recording the end games and putting them into youtube channel Okay. And therefore, That's it is well. different, different type of idea. But if it would be possible, I will do it. I'm, a, I'm actually planning because I, as I'm learning end games, I kind of like it, and I'm getting into that. So I, my plans to the short little videos. Um, it's excellent. You know, yes. Okay. Whatever, yeah. whatever promotion, whatever interesting ideas, probably it's great because all of the people will just learn from this as much as possible. And now, as we just mentioned, there is the short side for the king and the long side okay. for the rook. 
And now let's have a look what happens after King gets into the short side. This is the safe one, even if it looks a little bit dangerous. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. And how black can improve uh, their position? How black can mm -hmm. improve? For example, if I put the king on the other side of, uh, sorry, on the opposition, how would you react by white? Well, by white? Mm -hmm. Yes, for example, I'm just going here and threatening to checkmate and threatening to push the pawn well, forward. there's just a check on the B8. Right? Yeah, 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 do it, do it, yeah, yeah, okay. that's what I, okay. yes. Yes, do it, yes. And if I go here... Well, then again. Yes, and if I go here... Then... Remember the idea yeah, that we discussed? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Remember this idea that we discussed? It's super simple. I know, I know. I'm thinking... Is it King C1? No, hold on. I didn't want to let you... I would, I would rather not risk. I would rather not risk. Because take notice. You there are, just go with the checks. Again. Yes. There are some attempts with Rook Endgames that are safe and automatically. And the other one okay. I safe, but they're not automatic. But let's say I'm playing Rook on B8 and the King goes on C3 and mm -hmm. then... And then we just repeat the position. There's the same position. The same position. We reach the same position. I... Okay, well, this is the same. This is the same. There is okay. no difference. There is no difference. Okay. And that's okay. why this would be the draw due to the threefold repetition. Because we just repeat the position. And one more time, mm -hmm. because it's very important, because sometimes people are afraid of being flagged with some kind of stupid checks. Right? If they are stupid checks, no problem. We are just checking the king that many times that the king step back from the palm. If the king gets the other side the same after... Sorry, this is a little bit... Uh, these checks would be all of the time if the king gets too far away from the pawn and then the king must hide uh, in front of the pawn. Can you see that? This is the same idea that we had previously with the uh, stuff about the pawn pushed on the third rank with the Philidor idea. Okay. It is the same. And that's why the king is forced to get in front of the pawn. Otherwise, okay. if the king tries to get into well, any fine, side of the board, most... it's going to check infinitely. Oh, yeah, well, we, yeah, we have to work on the C8, so that's that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's why the, we... you cannot improve the position just with the kin going left or right, correct? Oh, right. And that's why yes. you cannot push the pawn, you cannot improve the position with the kin. You need to make some of the ideas with the rooks. Of course, this one would be the first one, this one would be the second one. You can just check on the B2 or the G1, correct? Yeah. And let's pretend uh, at this moment that Blex gets rick check. And now, again, okay. what are the ways to defend at this moment? Well, obviously, we only have one square to go. Yes, very far. Let me be very creative about that. Yes, we do not need to think too much about that. And now, again, okay. if the rook gets here, we are just going back and forth. Therefore, it will be the threefold repetition, right? Yeah. And now, Perfect. finally, if black wants to win, they need to step back from the path of the pawn, push the pawn forward, or make the checkmate threat that is unstoppable. At oh, this right. moment, they cannot do so. Because, for example, after rook check here, if the king gets for this side of the board, you have these checks, but be careful, it's a little bit better, because take notice there is one important rule beside the previous one. Remember about this one? Yay. How many squares needs to be between the pawn and the rook to make it safe from the side checks? Do you remember this? Was it like three? No. Yes, um... at least three. At, three, okay. at least three empty files, if this is the safe one. We will be looking at the positions that will be less than three, and then it's going to fail, okay? <laughs> and therefore, this yes. one would be pretty much easy draw. Okay. Now let's Can have a look. I have like one minute break? I'll be back of in course, a second. No okay. problem. Yeah, of so course. If, if Chad has any questions, uh, uh, Tinker Teacher can explain it. Uh, so uh, I'll be back. Sorry, one second. Okay, no problem, no problem. If you guys have any questions about the positions we analyze, Put them into the chat i'll try to address them and take notice i'm trying to show you super simple stuff and then slowly increase the level of difficulty therefore if i just show super simple ideas it means that they are important to understand the ideas on the higher level in a moment okay and therefore at this position the most important if the kings are on the opposition right here this is the position with the opposition right here next to each other on the odd number of squares, there is the checkmate threat. We do not go right here or right there, because after this, maybe I'll just show you, after rook gets on the last rank, rook blocks, rook captures, king captures, and now king gets here, and it's an immediate loss for white. 
because the pawn cannot be stopped and it is super simple to remember because we just make the first trades of the rook and getting into the pawn endgame that is pretty easy winning for black. That's why this move to make the rook on the last rank defense to protect uh, against the checkmate is not a good enough. Therefore, at this moment, we must get into the king on the short side and with the short side, we'll be going in a moment the other stuff. Now, rook check, king a2. Now, rook c1. I'll just repeat it in a moment when Tosh appears. Take notice that this rook is just protecting the pawn. Because if you go the other way with the rook, no matter which one, the rook would not be protecting the pawn. Got it? And that's why one of the best attempts is to just protect the pawn and then try to step back and push the pawn forward. Because if you try to get the king immediately, you just lose the pawn. If you get with the king on these squares, there is the reign of checks that we were talking about. Remember? This would be pretty much easy to address. And therefore, at this moment, the idea is just to protect the pawn. What about that? Let me know, guys, if you understand this idea so far. Yes, this is the escort position, you can call it. Mm -hmm. And that's why rook c1. And in a moment, you'll see how to defend it in a, let's say, next idea. Because there is the, uh, let's say, position of the short side or ideas, short side versus long side. And in a moment, we'll see why the long side is that much important. We'll be just addressing this in a moment when our friend Tosha uh, uh, comes back. And we'll be just talking about it soon. Therefore, the most important at this moment that you should know is even though the position looks a little bit scary, you do not need to be scary. I'm back. Okay, I'm just, uh, I just introduced new concept to the chat, but I'll just repeat uh, for, for you as well. Now, we have the position that after, after uh, let's say, maybe start fr from, the, from the start. Rook c8 attacking the pawn, king c3. Now the king gets to the short side. After that, rook attacks on the first rank, king step back. And now, if the rook gets on the second rank and the first rank attacking all of the time, we are going back and yeah. forth with the king, right? Okay. And there is no progress. There is just repetition, but no progress. And therefore, black tries different approach. They put the rook onto c1 to protect the pawn. Why is that? Because if they started to push the king immediately, the pawn would be lost. All right. If they, if they try to get outside the king, we can have either these checks, or in a moment we'll see another type of defense that is a little bit more precise. Therefore, rook c1. And now, what? how to continue right now? I mean the safest uh, route, because there may be different one, but the safest. What do you think? White. Yes, white to play. Okay, mm -hmm. so, safest. Safest and the easiest to understand, at least from my standpoint. Well, for me, without calculating anything, just from intuition, what mm -hmm. might be wrong, I would try to cut out the king on the longer side mm -hmm. for some reason because I feel like the king kind of control over the squares on the short side, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like the rook would try to control uh, the, the 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 d file. Also, I feel like in the end games usually it's kind of scary where the king is on the other side of the pawn. What the other king is. Because he kind of so like what well, I'm thinking that if the king is like over here and my king is on the other side, the pawn kind of has the way to promote. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't want that to happen. Yes, so. and this one of the a concept that you that you address is very good one. But I will just oh, show you. <laughs> no, no, it's correct. It's correct. Oh, at this right. at this position, just uh, two moves that are losing are just to uh, give up the rook for for the pawn and not I achieving too that. much or get into the checkmate king a three. There are just two moves that loses. All of the other moves that you do are not lo not losing. But even though if there are many moves that are not losing, it doesn't mean that it will be easy to understand the concept if you just need to play it out immediately. For example, two seconds per move, right? If you have the instinct, if you have the habits to know about the ideas, you can recognize immediately. You can make the moves with the 0.2 seconds on the clock. Got it? Okay. And if you just try to learn about the position, but analyze all of the time, if it is rook b1, rook c1, maybe push the pawn, maybe opposition's one, and there are too many ideas and too many moves you need to select, you are losing the time, losing energy, and you are getting confused. Okay. Because in rook and games, the biggest problem is to try too many approach at once. 
Okay. For example, if there are five meso methods of of uh, defending this type of position, if you are learning fives in a in the same time, you are get completely confused. But if you start right. learning the the one that you like the most and understand the best, it's practically practically speaking the best approach. Okay, I understand that. Yeah, uh, just answer the chat. Uh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Can, no, I'm just answering someone in the uh -huh. chat. Okay, saying, okay. I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> okay, got it, got it. And now at this position, we have perfect, perfect example to see the idea of the short side versus long side. And now look about yes. the position because it's super easy to to understand and remember. Where is the kin? I mean white. Okay, well, the king is on the short side at the moment. Yeah, and where is the uh, uh, white rook? Well, the rook is behind the pawn, but we can move mm -hmm. on h8 mm -hmm. to have that space. Yes, excellent. We are just going with the rook as far away as possible with so-called the short, uh, long side, sorry. And then we just have these checks, the one that we have previously with the same idea, but a little bit different position with the filidor. Remember, it is just rotated 90 degrees. Yeah, okay. Right? Of course, the pawn yeah, is a go going different way a little bit, but it's the, the, the same idea, but with the, a little bit of rotation. Okay. I kind of noticed that in those type of end games, uh, like the rook basically just move this, well, obviously it depends, but it's usually like maybe h3 sometimes and be like h8 and all behind the pawn. It basically, there's no really other places for the rook in, for the weaker side. That's yes, yes. The pattern. Yes, and, and, and very important what is at this type of position that uh, you need to be able to chase the king away as far as possible if there is a chance. And if it's, there is no such a chance, you're just standing with the same file. But now there is the chance because as we can see, there is the one, two, three and four empty files between the pawn and the rook that would be placed on the All same right. rank. Got it? What about that? Yeah, that's good. I understand. Uh, I understand. Damian is just uh, saying in the chat that uh, you're too nice because he'll be more <laughs> <laughs> mean to me. So, so uh, Warrior is saying that if Damian wants to roast me, he can book another coaching session <laughs> with me, and then he, he'll be free to. Uh, maybe, be, maybe I need uh, to. Maybe I need to reveal my goal. I do not know no. about Damian's, but my goal is to help you grow, help to understand. <laughs> Therefore, it's not Thank my goal. You. Therefore, I do not. Really Analyze this goal. Sorry about it. Oh yeah, Damien says that he doesn't know if he can teach me anything. That's that's horrible thing to say. I I'm not as bad. I'm a good student. Please. Say yes, it. I I, I agree. You are a very good student. And now rook h8 to make the side checks. This is the simplest idea because the king wouldn't be able to hide. Can you see that? And if uh, the king if the king gets yes. on the last rank and after the check, it even can lose the rook and the game. And now at this moment, look about mm -hmm. what uh, what the uh, what black does? What is the idea about black right now? What do you well, think? Because we were talking before that if I would be white, well, the rook was obviously somewhere else. But my plan was to play the rook on d8, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. now we can actually play that because the rook is on a d1. But it's also another idea I see that if we would plan any checks mm -hmm. like that on the side, the rook can cover the king. Excellent. And that's the point. And that's the point. And look about this. If you put the rook on the sixth rank, the rook would cover. Of course, after the exchange, it's pretty much simple and winning pawn end game. Therefore, we do not analyze it because it's lost. And therefore, okay. if the rook stops you from that side checks, you're repeating the position with attacking the pawn from the back. Okay, so... Yeah, so now I can play rook c8, yeah? Yes, rook c8 yes, again, because you do not have the opportunity to make the safe side checks, because rook would be blocking the side check, and then you'll get into the trouble. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, so that... Does it make uh, sense? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. I mm -hmm. mean, it's a lot of information, but um, uh, it's getting more... Clear. Uh, clear, yes. Okay. Yes, and that, that's what I wanted to make, uh, to help you, to make it a little bit clear. It doesn't matter, no, sorry, not it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that you'll be yeah. possessing the endgame skills mm. of a master just overnight or over one session, but rather you'll be having some like more clear stuff that you will not get into the simple traps and the ideas that are not good enough. Okay, uh, this one question from the chat. Mm -hmm. So, so the white king is blocking the black king from hiding behind their own rook question mark compared to the using the long side for the king 
So, hold on, hold on, one second. But the White King is blocking the Black King. The White King is stopping Black King from getting here, probably. That, that's that's yeah. probably what they mean. And from if, the short side. Yes, and what they, what they probably want to know is if the King gets outside too far away, we have just these checks again. Yeah, so mm -hmm. basically short side for with the weaker side, right? Yes. The short side, short side for always the king, for the kin. Because the king kings make small moves. So the yes, king the king because the king is slow pace, slow pace piece, therefore yeah. the king would not be going pretty quickly on this side of the board. And rook okay, is opposite. Rook, rook is super quick. Space. Therefore rook needs to have a lot of space to make all of the power. Okay. Well that mm -hmm. seems pretty like yes, it is pretty, natural. pretty yes, intuitively and natural to, to understand it, but we need to address it that rook needs to be very active. In rook endgames, in general, if the rook is yes. inactive for whatever reason, in 90% it's lost position, for whatever okay. reason. And if okay. you have the choice, most often the time in rook endgames, to give up the pawn or to have the rook that is pretty much uh, passive, in 90% of cases, it's again, give up the pawn, make the rook as active as possible. If you make the rook, pa uh, if you make the rook passive, sometimes even being up a pawn, even two pawns, may right. mean that you're losing the position. Even up two pawns with the passive rook position, you can lose the position. And mo many times, if you are being down a pawn, but you have very active uh, rook, very active king, sometimes you can okay. uh, be even up two pawns down and draw the position as well. Therefore, activity um, of the rook is the paramount. Okay, we need examples, you know, we can... <laughs> we'll be having examples at a later stage, because now we are just having the basics. Now, uh, at some point, we'll get the uh, intermediate, and then we'll be seeing the practical example with some, like, play, play from the game. Okay, so guys, this is going harder. Yes, so it's, was, it's going slowly harder. That was, that was playground, that was easy, so this is... <laughs> that'd be more humiliating for me now. That means you'll have a chance to roast me. Don't worry. <laughs> And now, rook c8, and king needs to step back. Because take notice, if black would be getting back and forth with the rook, for example, on this one, you can just go the same. You do not need okay. to do anything, right? Therefore, after king step back, we can we can go check and capture. But after the capture, the king cannot get into the pawn. The king gets to c2 and swinging endgame, right? Okay. Therefore, yeah. we, cannot, we cannot exchange the rook as yet. Therefore, we are going closer. And now the idea about the rook remains clear. Because You're if you right. have the rook the other, other side of the board, no matter which one, the pawn would go into the f6 square with check. And after pawn gets with check and the pawn gets into the c7, it's so-called the self-winning mechanism. May I show it? Mm -hmm. For example, if you have the uh, move, let's say, um, let's say here, I'm just showing for the instructive purpose. Check, sorry, okay, one, one more move because I need to make it the same way as what before but with the uh, white to move this one and now it's black to move what does what do i mean if pawn gets with check because rook is not controlling the f6 square the king cannot get closer right yeah the king needs to okay. step back from this square and after this move pawn moves here this is because we'll be learning about it in a moment this is the self-winning mechanism Self-winning. What does it mean? It means the pawn reaches seventh rank or the seventh or the uh, second rank, and yeah. the, and protects the rook. And now the right. idea: if you attack with the rook, it's too late because first of all, the rook is protected by the pawn. The king doesn't matter. For example, if the side is like that, you are just making the zigzag, right? Or getting closer for the rook. Yeah, the checks are gone, and after rook attacks the pawn, okay. even for the second time, it is too late because the okay. pawn promotes. Okay. Can we repeat the position, yeah, of position course. from the beginning, please? Of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in that situation... You mean the, the, the original one, right? Yeah. Okay, now it is this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... So uh, the white now... See, I got a bit lost. I think my attention went... No problem, no problem. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. so um, obviously if the rook plays in d8 at the moment, mm -hmm. we're just going to play king on... And yes. Right? Uh, sorry, uh, you, you mean King C2 uh, black? Yeah. Yes, but it would be very bad because you help the king to reach the, uh, the, reach, to reach okay. the building bridge position. It would be very bad. You cannot do okay. so because you, w what you need to prevent is two, two stuff. The first one is to get the king closer and pawn the con closer. 
Right. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. checking. Checking is not important at this moment because the king is pretty much safe. After the check, it uh, protects the rook and after the trade, it's completely lost. Therefore, you need to stop the pawn advance. How can you stop the pawn advance? Uh, well, obviously, oh, sorry, the king can be... B2. Mm -hmm. And this is the idea. You stop. You cannot get B3 because illegal move. King B2 because now the advance would be very bad due to capture and check. Capture is All not right. a problem. The check is problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, sorry, I just... No problem, no problem. Uh, that's, that's actually the new one for me. So this one I didn't know. So I need to just look at it. Feel free to again. ask any question. I have prepared uh, for this collaboration for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I analyzed a lot of stuff. I was that much confused that at one point, maybe I'll just give a little bit insight uh, about about my, uh, let's say, uh, activity, that at some point I was having uh, the stream with our community and uh, this, this was the position that analyzed, but I, I didn't see one of the subline, one of the version, and I couldn't figure out what, what needs to be done. After five minutes of analysis, it, uh, I, I figure out that king can uh, king captures the pawn. It's a draw, just one mover. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, yeah. Okay. Therefore, Somet don't. Sometimes you need to walk away. And yeah. Then go back. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you're yeah. going too deep, and the solution is just one mover or two movers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it happens. Well, I was kind. Of, I was very excited for, mm -hmm. for learning rook end games. I I used to hate end games, but for some reason I actually really enjoy learning process at the moment which which is very good for him but i'm surprised because i used to like just hate them <laughs> but, um, can, but can can i ask what was the reason what what was the reason that you hate hated end games i think i was very embarrassed that at certain points uh, people just expect me to know them mm -hmm. and whenever i was going to the coach or something and they'd be just like oh like you're very bad at this at this and i felt like bad to open you up about the fact I don't like end games, but I thought I'd be like self-conscious about it, and then mm -hmm. uh, and then I just kind of didn't want to go back to them. I just didn't didn't like that. I got and it. Maybe I just thought that I don't know how to learn them. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Probably so. this is the biggest problem. Many people are hating the end games because they see or they thought about the end games that is uh, very boring, very difficult. You do not learn anything because there are exact position with the, let's say, minor uh, difference and therefore yeah. they will not be able to grasp that. But as a bonus, at the end of our collaboration, I will show you and your audience the practical position that I played yesterday in the tournament over the board, rapid one, okay. that I get into the rook end game with being two pawns down. I actually had, a long, I was playing the rapid game when I got into the rook end game. Uh, that was that was funny, but it was a bit different because it was two rooks. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I actually had two rook against a rook and a pawn, and it actually wasn't as easy as you know everyone thinks. So I, I had a bit of a struggle, but I, I did one. Apparently, you thought I'm 29 years old. I should get offended now. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Warrior said that you oh. thought I was 29 years old. See, okay, so my bad, bad. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> I'm not. Let, let's yeah. make a deal. Let's make a deal. I will never say how old are you. I will try to say how young are you, but try yeah. not to ban me before the collaboration is over. What about that? Okay, I'll do, yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Guys, uh, that's another lesson. You shouldn't ask women how old they are. You should be like, how young? Are yeah, you? yeah. How old <laughs> is pretty much insulting, <laughs> insulting yeah, and rude. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, so let's go back uh, to yeah. the and we are going into the position. Can be two to stop the pawn from advance because you have the square f, uh, the square c3 controlled twice, right? Yes. And now black yes, needs exactly. to improve the position anyhow. If they play with the king, it doesn't matter too much because if they step back from the pawn, you just capture the pawn. That's it. Yeah, so that's fine. So you cannot okay, push the so pawn. The you cannot hide. Pawn. Take note, it's very important. You cannot hide. That's the reason. Can you see that? Yeah. You I cannot hide. And therefore, you need to improve the position. Otherwise, you will not make the progress. What would be the okay. way to, to progress by black? Um, well, the, the rook. So the rook yeah. has to be, the one has to move, but was it, sorry, I don't know, rook d2 seems to Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Rook d2, because you need to force uh, the issues and you cannot push the pawn. You cannot make with the king move, therefore you must move the rook. It's pretty much obvious. And now at this moment, where to put the king, uh, the, the, the white king? Where to put the white king? Um, 
Well, I would assume that be A3 because it's closer to B4. No? You mean A3 right here? Oh, no, 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 sorry, no, king on C, C, C1. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I, got, <laughs> I got it because I was a little bit confused about king A3. You are just blocking the pawn with having the king and the uh, pawn on the same rank. Yes. What about that? Yeah, no, that makes sense. And sorry. now what is the threat by white at this moment? Of course, it is black to move, but what is the threat if white would have another move for free? What would you play? Uh... So, what's the question again? What would be the threat if white hoof another move? For example, white played yeah, king c1, the, black doesn't do eight. anything. Sorry? Rook d8. Rook d8. Yeah, and, and what is the idea rook. behind it? Uh, well, capturing the rook. Yeah, it is the skewer. Two. Yes, okay. yes, the skewer. Yes, excellent. <laughs> and that's why I told you <laughs> that nice. skewer is a very important motif in rook and rooks. What would be another idea to draw it? So rook d8 is a winning move. What would be the simplest to draw, not to win? To we'll draw. Take capturing the pawn and see yeah, yeah, that's correct. Capturing the pawn, king recaptures, king recaptures, ga game over. Okay. And therefore, well, I... Like, oh, I see that, right? This is fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, take, take notice that even if I'm asking so called stupid questions in a quotation mark, it's not the goal to embarrass know, you, but, but to it's show not your. Only for me, it's, it's a chat as well. So yeah, yeah, but, but yeah. I need to address to for, for the chat as well that uh, if I'm asking the questions that are so-called stupid, easy, and so on, the goal is not to embarrass Tosha, but rather to show <laughs> the idea, the idea. Because oh, my the goal, goal is not to embarrass always. anybody. Sorry? The goal, the goal is always to embarrass Tosha, ah. according to Damian and the chat. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe, maybe there are different goals <laughs> of your chat. Don't worry, you don't... No, that's just a joke. You don't have to embarrass me, I'm doing that myself. Okay, I'm very good, okay. <laughs> good job. Okay, therefore I will be focusing exclusively on the Rook and Games content. Embarrassing and other stuff is on no, your part. Oh, this is my job. Okay. Like, I, do it, I do it anyway. No okay, intention. thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you. It will be a little bit easier for me. And now, Sorry, at this I moment... No, at this moment we have the threat of the skewer or capture the pawn and immediately draw. And therefore, it's black that black needs to make any progress. What would be the idea of black? The idea of black um, would be. Uh, well, obviously, we. Hold on. Actually, one second. Mm. Well, I would say, would that be a rook on. Look Rook about the possible two. possible moves, even if they are okay, so-called well, stupid. Two. two possible moves. Uh huh. Which are they? Well, there's not two. But the two I'm considering is Rook on the C2 with a plan. Actually, that doesn't make sense. Oh, no, 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 right. no. Just we're try gonna, to pro provide that. Two, and mm -hmm. the king will go on the B1. The plan is play king on C. No, C3, no, C3. King on D2. And if the rook will play rook D8, then I'm going king on C3. Can you make the arrows? Because I was a little bit confused. Right. Can you use the arrows? Okay. It would be easier for me. Just Sorry. the arrows. Mm -hmm. So, rook on the C2, mm -hmm. right? Check. Yeah. That was one idea. Uh -huh. uh, first, let's say king goes on b1, mm -hmm. right? And I would play. Well, I didn't calculate it, but no king problem. on king on d2. Mm -hmm. Let's make it. Let's make it. It's very important. It's very important to show you okay. is it is good enough not. Look about this. We cannot capture the pawn immediately, but the yes. rook, but the rook is uh, protected by the by the king only. So like the rook and the king has the uh, let's say contact next to each other. Yeah, it's a little bit scary. But then if the uh -huh. rook goes in the d8, I have rook on the c3. Yes. After check but, here, take yeah. notice that now the rook goes here, but we can just repeat the position. No problem. Okay, so that's not. We are on the same place. I know. This You're on the same place. Good, because so I failed. No, 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 no. You didn't fail. You just provided a great answer. Look about this. Black it's because content. Take oh sorry. <laughs> oh, no, I, need... <laughs> I am too much con too much focused over the educational stuff, not just the content. No, I I'm, I'm joking. Yeah, no, no, this is good. I'm learning a lot. I'm just yeah, I just okay. like making jokes. And now the pawn the pawn hasn't moved. The king is in front of the pawn, and the rook doesn't do anything. If you just make let's say this check, I am just stepping back here. No problem. 
There is yes. no progress at this moment. And therefore, at this moment, if you move the rook onto the c2 square, I'm just going okay. here. After king, you didn't make progress. You just make a slight changes, but the exact position, the main one, remains the same. And therefore, what would be, what would be another idea? After rook here, what would be another idea? Well, the other idea was uh, c3, because I remember... Well, I don't know After c3, correct. it's the rook check. After king step back, we do not capture the pawn, because the pawn gets with check yeah. and the control yeah. exam. But take notice about this idea, remember? Oh, oh right, okay. okay uh -huh. And that. then we attack. This is the same that, that you just mentioned many times, remember? Mm -hmm. It is the same idea, and you just got into the simple right. uh, exchange okay. and trades into the drawn endgame. And that's why, if you understand yeah, this concept, I... it's super simple. Okay, I have one question. Can we go back? Mm -hmm. So let's say play c3. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and do rook on d8. D mm -hmm. I mean, I can do that as well. Yeah, right? no problem. Yes, uh, you can do it by so yourself. So I was saying, if I, let's say, play even over here, doesn't matter. Well, mm -hmm. here. And then if you do checks, does I'll... that matter if I'm trying to go this way? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What matters? Look about this. What matters? I can. You'll be. You'll be cut off on the on that e file. Correct. If I do not yeah. move the rook on the other file, will be cut off. The rook mm -hmm. and the pawn are unable to win by itself. As Hans Niemann mentioned, chess speaks for itself. But rook and pawn cannot win by itself without the support okay. of the king. Yeah. It's right. for the content. Hans Niemann is for the content. <laughs> I learned from you as well. <laughs> I, that was just a joke. I, I care about learning more than that because I have a tournament very important for me and I just, I mean, not only that, but this. Got it, I do, got it. I don't want to learn. And now look about this. After the check, if king step back far away, we just mentioned before that if the king is cut off two files away, we attack the pawn immediately. Remember? Mm -hmm. And now okay. after that, this is the threat to capture. If you go closer, I am just capturing anyway. And this is the drone endgame quickly, right? All right. After you uh, protect with the rook, I'm going here. The rook is attacked. Even if the king uh, protects that, of course, it would be winning due to the skewer. But anyway, I'm just showing you how you can exchange quickly. Got it? Mm -hmm. And that's why at this moment, just pushing the pawn doesn't give you the opportunity to uh, improve the position with some kind of testing out. Because take okay. notice, do you remember the idea about uh, rook on the sixth rank? The Philidor. Uh, yeah, I remember this that, is the yeah. same. Look about this. This is the same. I'm not sure if you if you see this resembles, but it is the same. All the, right, so the pawn just rook h2. Yes, the pawn moved forward, and you cannot hide uh, in front of the pawn. Remember? Yes. And that's why, if you want to make any progress, you need to try this trick and try to push the pawn with the checkmate threat and so on. Does it make okay. sense? Yeah. And what what black should uh, sorry what white should play at this moment? How well, could you how could you handle? Well, I wouldn't. I don't think I would move a rook mm -hmm. from C8. I think this is the spot where it's supposed to be. Okay. So I would go. I obviously can't play King D1 because they've been yes. checkmate. Yes. After King D1, right? you are just going into so the beautiful I checkmate. Only have one, yeah. I only have one move for the king, mm -hmm. and I would go on the B1. Yes, but take note: this B1 would be a little bit trouble. Because after pushing the pawn, this could be again threatening okay. checkmate. What about just um, like rook c7? Yes, a little bit easier. Because even if this would be probably drawing as well, rowing as well, but you're risking a little bit too much. Take notice okay. that you can make yes. with the moves on the c file, and very important, always about think about the king and the pawn. Right. The pawn okay, cannot so attack you on on the c file. It can attack you only on the b or d file at this moment. Okay, so basically in that position, right? Mm -hmm. The rook and the king. Can I just? I just yeah, want of to course. get rid of the arrows mm -hmm. for now. So the rook and the king are in that line, and obviously the pawn is over here. That's kind of safe, right? Because the king is covering the the promotion square, and the rook is behind the pawn. So that's fine. So that's why you wouldn't really move king on b one, mm -hmm. right? So I just think that. If I would have a position in the game like that, I would try to keep my king on kind of on the capture, on the promotion square. Yeah, yeah. And this is the safest because first of all, take notice that pawn physically cannot move as long as the king is blocking their path. 
right? Okay. Physically. And second of all, even if you if these squares would be safe for whatever reason, the pawn gets into the seventh rank with check. And with check, you're losing the tempo or the move. Got it? Yeah. And, and therefore, it's not that safe. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And then one more question. So if Go I on. obviously play rook c7, right, and king goes on the c3, defending. Uh, yeah. Yes, you can push push that on point. the board. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Over here. Then now my king, because I'm moving with the king, right? Mm -hmm. I would be going on the short side. Of course. Of course. King on the short side, the rook on the. No. Rook, rook is the long range piece and it requires a lot of space, a lot of, therefore long. Kin is a very slow piece, therefore it doesn't need to have a lot of space. The kin is just uh, sitting in the in front of the TV watching serials. Okay, okay, I get that. Right? Mm -hmm. And Where therefore at this moment, there? after kin b1, we have the same position. The only difference is rook c8, c c7, the only difference. All of the, all of the other stuff is absolutely the same. Okay. Yeah. And what about okay, that? Yeah, Does it make sense, sense for you? Uh, yeah, that, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I understand. So. Um... And after the check, kin a2, after rook c1, we are just getting the checks from the side, side because yes. rook, rook cannot cover, very yeah. important. If rook wants to cover, we are bringing into the idea, as we just previously seen, we'll having the back. rook on the seventh run, uh, sorry, on the c file. After the king step back, we are having the square controlled. All right. Well, that's okay. it. And this is the idea. And this is a draw. Yes, yeah, so this is a draw. If you get into the okay. short side, it's draw. It's draw. Would you like to see what would happen if the king gets into the wrong uh, side of the board? Yes, let's show it for the content. Okay, <laughs> let's show it for the content. After this, the king can get with the correct move on the short it's side. Like the short side is the less squares into the edge of the board. Or the king can get into the long side. Therefore, it's a bad choice because it results in a loss. And now, okay. how, how would you continue at this position? With, with black. With black. Mm -hmm. okay. with black. So, if that would happen, I would probably play... Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. What was there? Um, can I how, play how can you make... rook and a2? Yes. Sorry? Rook a2? a2? No. Uh, maybe put it different way. What is the simplest way to make the progress? Do not think about the moves, but rather about the progress. Oh, sorry. So, wait, so hold on. That makes uh, sense. Rook mm -hmm. on the G1. Yeah, yeah. You're making progress. You're oh, yeah, so pushing that, away so. the kin as far away from the pawn and then helping with the kin. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Sorry. That's my bad. That's okay. That's uh, okay. You are learning. Kin Ito. Now how to continue. Lucina. Oh, this is yeah, interesting. yeah, it's close, right. close to building the bridge in a moment. Mm -hmm. So king goes in the B tree. Maybe Obviously. before. Sorry for interrupting because it's very important for the audience especially. Now, okay. as you as we can see, it's very important to see how many space the king have. You can see that? Mm -hmm. This is some like uh, uh, this is some like the. Um, I'm not sure how to uh, how to say it in English. Some like the part that you cut off the king. You know what I mean? King out of the box. Can you see that? Yeah. You're just know. going the kin okay. the kin is into this box. Maybe I'll just show it different way. Can you see that? The kin yes. cannot get there because you are having all of the squares covered by the kin and by the pawn. And that's okay. why it's winning. Because yes. at previous position, as we analyze, the kin always could get into either the promoting square, either block the block the uh, pawn. Remember? All right. Uh, yeah. I, I and now it was not going to be possible. Right. And continue, please. Mm -hmm. But like are we okay to do a King B3 move because then yeah we are yeah out the yeah king. we want to we want to push the pawn but we cannot do it with King B2. Yeah, the no, rook is perfectly placed pawn. because it cuts off the king on the last rank. Correct. So we have to kind of go on the B3. Yeah, and go then on. There be a check. Mm -hmm. I'm just going on the C2. Yeah, yeah. You are going King B3 first, and now you are threatening to push the okay. pawn. And after pushing the pawn, you're hiding in front of the pawn. Okay. And the king cannot do anything at this moment. But what about king d2 at the moment? Yes, after king d2, if you push and the I pawn, see three, yeah. it would oh. be a problem due to the check. Yeah, right? exactly. So I couldn't, couldn't play I knew that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now, at this moment, how would you continue? So, on this moment, I would... Probably do um, wait a second because I probably I probably spoiled. Sorry, I probably spoiled 
uh, because it's not correct. Give me a second. Yes, I was a little bit too optimistic. Uh, okay. At this moment, you need to... I was a little bit too much lost in thoughts. You okay. need to protect the pawn first. <laughs> I was too quick. Sorry, that's okay. That's fine. It happens. Yes. So, need... so I play rook on c1. Okay, so... Oh, yeah. That's important. Yeah, so because it's the same idea important. from the other angle. Mm -hmm. So we actually have to play rook c1 to defend the pawn. Yeah. And also... Yeah, so at the moment we are cutting out the king anyway, mm -hmm. so we kind of have that space to do it because the rook can't do much and rookie she does very well in here. But what happens if the rook plays in the b8 now? Yeah, no problem. If the rook gets into b8, at this moment the king cannot get outside. If possible, we need to get outside here, but we need to reach the position that we have the king and the pawn on the 7 a 8 franc. Right? Yes. The king would be on the 8th rank, the pawn would be on the 7th, and then we'll be building the Okay, and that allows bridge. us to push the pawn even more. Yeah, yeah. And this moment, take notice, the king is right here. You do not have these side checks. All right. Mm -hmm. And now, how the white would continue? Well, the white could... Oh. Um... I don't know, like... For example, white cannot get into these uh, squares because they are covered by the pawn, by the king, and by the rook. Yeah, I don't know, like, well, rook b7 is that stupid. No, it's okay. It's just waiting. Move is perfectly fine because you're waiting what your opponent does. And your opponent okay, pushes the pawn trade? forward. Yes, pushes the pawn forward. And what then? Now we have the position that is the classical one, except of the rook. But in a moment, rook will just uh, be leaving this place. That the king cannot get outside from both files. Can you see that? The black king. Cannot get outside, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And now at this moment, we cannot improve the king's position as long as the rook is standing on the last rank. We cannot right. improve the pawn's position as long as the king is standing on the seventh rank. Okay. And so... how to continue with black? Yeah, sorry, with white. Mm -hmm. You cannot get on the last rank and on this square and on this square because you are cut off by the king and the rook. Yeah. So why have to, well, now it's, oh god, what do I play with white? You can wait or you can make active moves with the king. It's up to you. Either here or there. Active uh... move with the king or, or just wait for for uh, for black what, what they want to do. It's up to you. Both moves are okay. Oh, is it? Yes. I, I don't know. Uh, Both moves are okay. Well, probably with a rook. Because no. the position is won for black, regardless of what we play. Uh, yeah, okay, well, they're both wrong, basically. No, no, okay, no, well, they are not wrong. They are, they are the they waiting moves. Because... <laughs> well, I don't know. Let's, let's, we kind of know what's going to happen after rook on b8. Uh -huh. But what happens after king on e3? No problem. With king e3, you have the position that you probably would like to try this trick. Because then you can just capture the pawn. Is that correct? Yes. And I now... I can go with the rook as far away as possible. Hold on, what happens if the rook on b1? Rook on b1? No problem. I'm just advancing the king and the pawn. Because no, oh, in a sorry, moment... No, no, no. Hold on. Uh, yeah? Rook on b1. When the black rook. Oh, we mean b with black. Okay. With black, the rook is rook b1 is perfectly fine as well. It's even yes. better because you can get if king c1 and king and pawn c2 with that self-winning self -winning mechanism. Therefore, it would be okay. great as well. Mm -hmm. It's All even right. better. It's even better. And now, you okay. cannot exchange the rook due to the lost endgame. And you need to get off from the B file. Okay. And where where would like to go with the rook? White rook. Um, well, I think I will go like rook on H7. Mm -hmm. Yes, because of because... the side checks that you can try and, and see right. if, the, if, the, if they work. Rook H7. And now, what yes. about what about black? How black should react? Um, the black should play rook on the sorry sorry king on b two. King b two. Because, because if there is a rook on a h two, I have the c two. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But if the rook will just check on b seven, yeah. I can go king on c one, and that allows me to push my pawn. Mm -hmm. Yes, after. it's. Yes, what? it's one of the ideas. And therefore, at this moment, exchanging the rook is pretty much lost because the king will not be able to catch the pawn. And if okay. we get on the second rank, we can just push the pawn. Yes. And now, how to continue with white? Resign. 
Yes, but if you just make a little bit uh, of resistance, a little bit of resistance. Okay. Before so, resigning. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so... Because there is one important trick, one important trick, that if white would have two moves in a row, they would be drawing. Okay, okay. Therefore, okay. it is that a matter of tempo or waiting move, if you wish. <laughs> right. So, what else could that be? Um... What about king on d3? Yeah, excellent. You are attacking the pawn for the second time, and therefore, how black should continue? Um, well, the the black, I would think that rook c... Hold on, is it either rook c1 or rook d1? d1 rook is d1 a little bit more seven. active, because take notice, yeah, we have no, self-winning yeah. mechanism. Okay. Self-winning mechanism. And therefore, after that, if you step back here, I am going. Oh, yes. We can promote. We can promote. We can. Not as so... yet. Not as yet. Just, just one more move here, <laughs> and case. then promote. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. And at this moment, it's a winning position. And now, let me know if you understand why getting with the king into the uh, long side is just lo losing for weaker side for white. Do you have any? Um, okay. So, so if the king goes on the d1, what I'm going to do? This is lost, is... and this is drawn. Yeah. Right? Going the king into the long side is the lost position. Going yes. with the king on the short side is on a drawn shorts. position. Is a drawn position. So mm -hmm. we always go, yeah, okay. So yes. I know that. We are going onto the Wait. shorter side from the pawn, from this area. We are going okay. here. Yes. Because it's the short um, side. If you go in the other idea, the area for the rook that is very important yeah. to have, so you are just lost. Okay, so if the if the king goes on the d1, I'm playing rook on g1. Yes, you're forcing pushing, the king to get king outside. Away. Yes, and push the king and the pawn slowly. Okay, but before that, take notice rook c1. Before stepping back, you need to have the rook c1. Okay. Very important because otherwise it's, it's draw. Therefore, yeah, I told okay, you that we are, we are I, tricky. That was your mistake now, and I yes. remember that. Yes. Because it was like, oh, that was just... I need to make more mistakes. <laughs> no, I do actually. Do. It's funny because sometimes I do remember by mistakes, even just... yeah, yeah. Remember mistakes is but important. It was kind of was yes, because, because I said, I said, the, uh, and you confirmed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and th this is that. This is the idea. Of course, we'll be repeating this at some point as well. Therefore, we'll go for the next position. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Yeah. Okay. Go on. If you have any questions, just let me know. No. Because there no, are mo uh, many more positions. Therefore, I'm just going a little bit of speed. Yeah, run. I know. I know. So let's go because. They, yeah, let's go more challenging as well. Mm -hmm. What about this position? What would, how okay. would you continue at this one? Because this one is a little bit more difficult, but I'm not sure if too much difficult. Okay, so uh, I am. By the way, white is going white. from the second um, rank. Yes, this is from the. Yeah. yeah. White so, is going up the board. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. So in that position. Um, how would you evaluate the position without any moves? With with the evaluation, the general evaluation. Who is better and why? Well, obviously, white is better. Mm -hmm. And why? And why? Yes, the and, pawn. And we have a pawn. But the very good thing is that the king is very far away. It's actually called. And out. one more thing. And one more thing. King is far away, but one more thing that's super important. It's cut out by the. Yes, rook. the king is cut out, and that's why the king cannot take part with the stop of the pawn, with blocking the pawn, and the yes. rook itself is too weak. No matter what rook does, it's too weak because the king doesn't take part in blockade. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that I think you'll be able to win that. Sorry. I think I would be. This is winning. Yes, right? this is winning. Why to play and win? I think I think I will be able to win that. Win you are white. This. I am black. Mm -hmm. Go on. All right. See, I said too much. Okay. Well, I am uh, white. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So I am just going. Then hold on. This is now. See, I promised too much. And just push yes, the you are pushing pawn forward as far as way, and it will be the promoting. Of course, okay. after you put the rook on beside uh, behind the pawn, I will not be able to stop it. That's why I am going this way to make it happen. Okay, so I am just uh, going to... Yes, okay. you are going okay. closer to the I'm pawn, protecting the pawn, better. and I am just trying to harass with the rooks. Okay, well, I will just go over here. Yes, and I am trying to go to the king a little bit closer and try to and break I'm here. Just trying to ignore it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I'm just going closer and closer. Okay. Well, now I'm. Hold on. This is this is the moment where. How are I'm you going thinking... to get outside of the pond? Maybe think about this way. 
How are you going to get outside? Oh, no. Yeah, so I definitely need my rope. Um... There is one move that's a little bit more precise. The idea is okay. very good, but a little bit more precision. Here? Uh -huh. And why? Because I do here. Mm -hmm. And, and what is the difference? What is the difference? Because you are thinking very well, but what is the difference? If you have the rook on b7 and if you have the rook on b8, what's the difference? Both are okay, both are winning, but there's one important difference. And I just mentioning this a few times already. <laughs> uh, it starts It starts with one? self, not selfie, but self. Self uh, winning mechanism? Yes, <laughs> yes, self winning mechanism. Why, why did you say selfie? Do I look like a because, person that just takes selfies? <laughs> you know, it's selfie because we just recently were learning about it. And one of the idea how to remember was the selfie. You are doing oh, yeah, the actually, selfie. This is a nice nickname for that. This is a selfie. Yeah, that's why we yeah. call it this way. You are doing the selfie. A selfie okay. is self-winning mechanism. If the pawn is protecting the rook, this is self-winning mechanism. The king gets outside, make the zigzag, and this is the over game over because the <laughs> rook cannot get there. Yeah. And therefore, this do is, the selfie. This is a nice coincidence because Warrior just posted links to my Instagram. Oh, therefore the selfie and the promotion. <laughs> there, was a, there was a nice self-promotion. Yeah, self-promotion <laughs> and selfie. Do the selfie, please. <laughs> <laughs> do the selfie. Okay, yes. Okay, so this one, let's do that Yes, one. you are going here. I'm going closer because I want to get with the king as close as possible. And now you're threatening the rook. Therefore, I need to step back. I am attacking the pawn because rook uh, is the long range piece. Okay, and I do here, right? No, oh, no, 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 no. So no. Selfie okay. is already done. You're escaping from the king oh, okay. as far away as possible. Yes. All oh, right. Because okay, selfie, you, you, have, you have done selfie, even with the help of... Uh, marching with the promotion mm, right yeah. and now rook <laughs> check okay well okay so well, uh, i'm going up yes here. and now i can't capture even if you do not protect the rook because yeah. of the oh, selfie sorry. because of okay. the selfie mm -hmm. and now i'm going check and you are going zigzag and now after yeah. one more check this Definitely one more check here yes you cannot get into this line because you will be losing the pawn mm -hmm. hey mm -hmm. you okay Yes, yeah. and now I need to attack the pawn. If this is black to move, I'll capture. Um, but it is white to move, therefore you need to know how to checkmate with king rook against the king. Yeah, we got okay. it. I guess, I guess it's pretty easy. This is easy. a selfie, guys. This is a selfie. Yes, this is the selfie. You create the selfie. Selfie is the position. The rook is on the last rank. Pawn is on the seventh rank, protecting the rook. This is the selfie. If you do the selfie, you look good. Okay. That's the simplest way to remember, I guess. And now let me know if you understand the idea why this position was dead lost for black and what to do with that selfie. Mm, why this position was... Well, because the king was cut out. That was the main thing. The king was completely out of the action and therefore the rook was not unable to stop the promotion of the king. Okay. The promotion of the pawn. Can we go for the next one? Yeah, let's go. Okay. Now we have another type of ideas, even though the previous one was obvious for many players, for the Masters it was pretty much tragic, but I don't care, even if uh, Magnus Carlsen sometimes cares, you are just cutting out the kin on the defile. And now, if you would like to explain what is the position uh, all about, it would be very important because in a moment we'll see if it is winning or drawing. Okay. So, uh, well, it's very hard for me to do the selfie now because I can go on a D8. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's the problem. Mm -hmm. And actually quite a lot, quite a big, because um, the moment, if I would do like a rook on the E2 and the moment I allow the king to come closer to the pawn, mm -hmm. I don't think I'm able to win that. Yes, so excellent. I'll just, I'll just interrupt for a while because it's super important. You discovered this, the stuff that I wanted to uh, let's say, ask you about, if there are no rooks at this moment, for whatever reason rooks has been traded, what would you play by black if you would like to stop the king? Black to uh, play. That, well, it would be too late. No, no, black to play, be a little bit creative, because it's for the content. Uh, all right. <laughs> I'm learning from you, I'm learning from uh, you. Well, no, but like, if the rook... Put, rook yes, rook are off the board. Oh, I don't know, king d8, right? King d8 would not be good because the king would get outside and the promotion. Think harder. Okay. Be a little bit creative. You can there do it. There's no rooks. There's no yes, rooks. there are no okay. rooks. Rooks are off the board. Forget about the rooks. Okay. No, there are no rooks. There are no rooks. Rooks are off the board. Black well, to play I, and I feel draw. I like you're tricking me here, right? <laughs> yes, I'm doing for the content. 
apps actually okay. for you because I do not need to have it, but I, I'm I helping you to okay. grow the content. Okay. <laughs> well, okay, let's, let's go another one, King D7. Yeah, King D7, but King D7 is a little bit too slow because the king get outside and the pawn promotes. Yeah, well, like, I can't, like, okay, King, king, uh, king D6. King D6 I mean, is a little bit too slow too because late, the king gets late. outside. <laughs> I know that. I, Damien, you got this. Are you happy? <laughs> queens. <laughs> queens. <laughs> there are no queens. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't know. This. There are no queens at this moment. <laughs> okay, I know. Fine. This is a draw. This is a draw. I'm not what would be bad. the move? Black to play and draw. This is a draw. I mean, this is a, this is a losing position for black. No, it's absolutely not. You didn't see King C7 and King C8. Mm, okay, yeah. This is the drawing move. King C7, King C8 is the drawing move. <gasps> that's great. <laughs> and that's why I told you to be a little bit creative. A little bit. Okay. Why is that? Because the king that. cannot get outside. And as long as the king cannot mm. get outside, the pawn cannot promote. <laughs> and that's why your goal is to reach these squares. I'm serious about it right now. I'm very serious. This I is know, the idea. I know, I, yes. Uh -huh, this is the idea. And that's why you need to have this idea to stop the king from getting outside. And now the question is, if white makes the selfie and the king would not be on the c7 square, mm -hmm. c7 square, it's lost. If the king right. is on c7 and white does the selfie, then the selfie is not that powerful because the king cannot get outside. Okay. And that's that's that, that that's the key for this position. And now, if white is just uh, going, they, are, they, are, they cannot get Let's into the there. selfie right here because the king is having the square protected. After that, black rook is not going to help the king to get outside. Therefore, rook on b file. Okay. Rook gets on d1 and try to get the other way. Probably this one. Okay. Uh, sorry, it was accidental one more time. Rook gets on d3, rook b2, now rook h1. And now, of course, king can get to the last rank or you can put the rook on the uh, b3 square. It's the same. The, the okay. idea so does not... Draw. Yes, the idea does not change. But let's see why it is a draw. Rook h1, king gets closer to have this idea of not allowing for the selfie. And now, after rook gets here, king here, and now... At this moment, if the king is one of these squares, actually it cannot be on c8 because rook is going king there. King on b6. Sorry? King on b6? No, no, king on b6 is a blunder. No, no it's a blunder. <laughs> Probably for the can content. We show, can we show why? Yes, can we show why? Probably uh, it's white to move, black to move. And now it's for the content, exclusively for the content. <laughs> it's a beautiful blunder by the skewer. Beautiful blunder, yes. But if you just play That's this way. Beautiful blunder, exactly. Now, this is the selfie. But mm -hmm. the king is already on c7. If the king would be on any different square than c7, it's winning for white. Okay. And why? Because why it is winning if the king is on any other square than c7? Let's say on c6, d6 or d7. Why it's winning? Not at this moment because king is c7, but in a because, moment. Why? Because the like rook b7 and king b8 concept? Yes, the king will be able to escape. Escape. I mean the white king. Thanks and therefore, right at this moment, it. rook h2, rook check, king gets to c6. I would rather prefer even this one, because it's a little okay. bit different. Not allow the king to escape being on c8, c7, and you cannot improve the position by white. The only way right. to lose it is to allow the king to step back from c file, because then the king gets outside and the pawn promote. Therefore, if the rook gets here, you need to stop it, not allow the rook to get on the file that will be chased. And now after rook check in here, rook check in here, rook here, you are going back and forth with the rook. After the king is attacked, you are going back and forth with the king. Therefore, these two moves and these two moves. And this is a draw. Okay. What about that? Um, Does it yeah. make sense to you? It's just for me, uh, can you repeat the concept while the yes. rook is in the C file? Just for me to get in my... When the rook is on head. C file, I mean the, the last part, right? Mm-hmm. Now, now, if the rook would be able to attack the king, the king will, will not be able to stay on these squares, on c8 and right. c7. Okay, so that's why we play rook c2 yes. to disable Sorry. the checks. Sorry, it was here, because there is the other variation I have on the database. And now rook here to block it, to stop okay. this check. Yeah, if you reach I, this position, if you reach this position, no matter, king c8, king c7, and rook is standing on one of these squares, mm -hmm. unless it's a blunder, 
It is a drone construction. Okay. Okay. What about that? That's all good. I think get that. Okay. okay. And now explain if this position is a drone or it's a lost if white to play. Well, this is this is this is this is a. Uh, a little bit of change. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think that could be a win because we are able to put a rook on the c8. Yeah. Okay, so that's. I think. I think so. I think so. Sorry. You mean so, c8 right here? Yeah. Uh, yes. No, what's the no. what's the point to put the rook on c8? I'm not you sure if I understood. B8. Oh, you mean c8 right here, right? To make the maneuver. Yeah. Oh, got it. Selfie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maneuver for the selfie. Because I <sighs> thought you mean the rook c8 is the final position, but you need to make the selfie from rook c8. Is oh, that correct? Oh yeah. Oh, sorry. I yeah. So I can't. I know. Sorry. I did. I did the move like that. But mm -hmm. In my head. I really yeah. It's okay. It's okay. The long it's, way. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> but I would just correct that because even though it's a good one, but a little bit not precise. The perfect one would be the moving the rook immediately with one move. I can. I. I do not know if Liches is able to show me this line. Therefore, it's not. But if the rook could magically get from e to into the selfie in one move, it would be the perfect solution. Mm -hmm. Of course, it cannot get due to the limitation of the board and the moves. Therefore, it would be the best to get in two moves. But <laughs> the problem is the king is having this square controlled, right? Yes. And that's the reason. And that's why you need to have the shortest path to get into the selfie. What is the shortest path to the, get the selfie? Try to well, draw the C2, line. But like rook, rook C2. Mm -hmm. Try to draw the lines if you wish. The, the shortest possible way. It's yes, possible. shortest possible would, way. That would be the same, right? No, well, it wouldn't be because this. How many? Work. How many moves it would require? How many moves? But that would require three moves because, uh, or even four. No, was it? Hold on. One. Let's pretend black does nothing. Let's pretend black does nothing to make it simpler. Black does nothing. You are just white. How many moves is needed to get into the selfie? Two. Two, two moves. Two moves. But two moves is a little bit too slow. I would say three. One, two, and three. Oh, yeah. Well, right? Yeah, Therefore, one, two, and three. Because you need to have the selfie, actually, not get into the selfie in one move. Correct? Okay. Therefore, uh, three moves. And now, how many three? moves is needed to get the king into c7? Because c7 three. is the three. And therefore, there are the, the same number of moves for white and for black. But it is white that wins. Uh, that white that starts. Okay. That okay, white that starts. That, and that. therefore, no matter what you do, the best is to make the path it's winning. And you can start with. Right, so uh, well, I get that. Mm -hmm. so, I'm I mean, going closer. Sorry? Well, if you want to skip to the next exercise, we can. <laughs> I mean, I think because this is the same. Okay, no. Yeah, yeah, but I will, I will show you why, why it's uh, because it's not the same position as previously. It's it's okay. different concept. Oh, it's a different. Yes, because take All notice right. if king c7 it's the same. Therefore, we are not uh, doing the same. It's a little bit different because the king is not on c7. Is that okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. Because king is king c7 was the previous example. Now the king is one square short from c7 and the rook is hanging. All right. You got the point. Yes. Okay. And now at this moment yeah. we have rook c1 attacking the pawn, and now it's you. Mm -hmm. How would you continue? It's white to move. Oh, uh, okay. Well, if we can just play rook c, rook b7, because that's not going to work. Rook b7 will help us because I'll reach uh, the square c8, yeah, and, know, and it's I a know, draw. Know, know. It's a draw. Can you recognize selfie? Yeah, I, I know, I know, I know, uh -huh. I know this one. I know go this on, one. go on. So I'm just going to show you the way of the king, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be yeah. here. Yeah. And this is important. Go here, and then. Here, Bravo. Here, yes, here. you did it. Got it. Yes, excellent. Bravo. And now I'm just uh, making the moves student. in your behalf. Now, the king cannot step back to b5 because the pawn would be captured. Therefore, you need to be a little bit careful. And Vaughn, when you are just going zigzag, either here, either you are going here, it's up to you. And it's winning. And that's why the king needs to get outside and help this square. Can you see that? The king, yeah. the black king, black king didn't cover this square. Okay. And that's why in a moment you see a little bit different position. The idea is the same, but a little bit different application. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's why at this moment, if you make the selfie, make the selfie, and Black King is not on C7, it's winning position. 
All right. What about that? So... Does it make sense? Yeah. So if the king goes on the son of D... No. So... Yeah. Hold on. I'm lost. Can you just say that again? Please? One more time. If the, if the king... If the selfie construction is already done and king is not on c7, it's winning for white. Okay. This is the point. The king must be on c8 or c7. It cannot be on c8 due to the rook. All right. Right? And therefore, we just mentioned, that's why I asked you about removing the rooks to have the king right here onto one of these two squares. Okay. At this moment, the concept so is the same. Move too slow in that situation. Yes. The king was a little bit too far apart from the pawn. If the king was cut off too far away from the pawn. That's the, okay, that's well, the idea. I get that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'll just show you one more position. Shaggy. Because this one probably is interesting. Look about this. The king can get into the d7, as we just mentioned, and you are just escaping via the c5 square, right? Because okay. the king cannot have it. And if the king gets into d6, you will not be able to escape c5, because the king mm -hmm. would be having protection of this. Can you see that? Yes. Now I'm going here. Of course, I can go here as well. What would you play? It's white to play. King, king on the B7. Yes, you can play it. You can play it on the board. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I am just attacking you. Where are I going to go? Yes, but I am attacking again. Attacking again. Yeah, now I'm in trouble. Yeah, looks like that you probably are a little bit in trouble. You have the selfie, but another component to win this position is to get outside. <gasps> oh, Hold on, I think I see, right? Uh -huh. So this, I'm going to go here. Excellent. Therefore, you must escape. And now the threat is to promote. And now look about this. I am going here. What then? Okay. Well, hold on, hold on. I just want to calculate that. I don't mm -hmm. want to put myself in any trouble, but I think I should be fine. Yes, you should be fine. And now we are promoting into the queen, correct? Yes. Can you promote to no, the no, queen? No, 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 no. I no, wanted no. to make for the content. You spoiled that. No, but it, it'd be okay if we promote the knight. Okay, you can promote into the knight. Yes, let's make no. the knight. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. I know that. I'm not that bad. But why promotion is not a good idea? Okay, well, so if I'm going to promote to the queen... Mm -hmm. You're up a queen. What's the problem with this? You're up a queen. Can you lose the position being up a queen? Yeah. How? Oh, I did a lot of times. Yes, but how it is possible <laughs> at this type of endgames? Yes, because of the checkmate due to the opposition. And there is a checkmate. Beautiful checkmate. And how to continue... Yes. This position if white if black plays rook h1 well if bra black oh well then obviously we have to oh, uh, go away from the opposition. yes and it is a good idea because this way i am drawing comfortably i know that you are doing for the content no problem because no no i'll just grab the pawn <gasps> yes yes it was for the content that. it's okay it was for the content perfectly fine <laughs> so i know it was for I... the content okay so can i win this though I'm not sure. If you know the idea, you can do it. Right. Um, mm -hmm. What would you play? Okay. Well, I assume I probably would do some check. Yes, this is check because otherwise you will be checkmated after the promotion to the queen. And now very important I... move. I am going here. Are you going to promote at this moment? Uh, on this moment, I am going to... No, 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 hold on. Oh, actually, no, no, one second. No, no. What about me? Why I... not promotion? What's the problem with the promotion? Are like there any? Losing, losing a queen. Yes, but the problem is the skewer that we mentioned many times. The skewer is the main motive with this type of endgames. I was kind of thinking about rook, rook c6. What is the point of that? Rook c6. What's the point? Well, the point is that if king would take... Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, no. No, no, no. What no, happened? I, did, I don't want to play queen against the rook. I don't, I don't know how to do that. I don't want to play. This we'll be doing this thing. next week, by the way, because next week we are going to learn about queen versus bishop. Queen versus knight and queen versus rook. We'll be having this onto the stream on mine. Okay, well, I won't be. I have a tournament. 
But you can uh, just watch the VOD after the tournament is over. Yes. I'll just send you the link. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I because uh, because we don't want to have a queen against the rook because we not I know I'm not good at that at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I am not going to do it. That was a horrible maybe, idea. Maybe maybe a better idea would not to get into the trouble. Just have the rook protecting the pawn and then promote. What about that? Is it better? Um. Yeah. Seems a little bit better. Little bit. Yeah. A li a li just a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Okay. This is the mistake. Why is that? After rook check, you need we've to get into the seventh rank. Yeah, one second. Mm -hmm. So we've got another raid from Chesdory. Hey, hello, 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 raiders. So actually, uh, we are training rook and games at the moment with the Tinker Teacher, uh, which has been a lot of fun. Uh, so, and uh, who doesn't know me? I'm Tosh. I am from Poland, but I'm uh, living in Ireland at the moment and I play chess a long time. <laughs> so in my life hey 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 hello everyone so thank you for 100 bits warrior and let's go back to the training so if you guys want to have any questions about the positions feel free to um interact with us and we explain and i'm learning as well so you can learn with me okay let's go back and now we have the rook that is attacking the king you need to get into one of the squares let's pretend you get into the h7 uh, sorry, okay. d7. Now the promotion is the threat, therefore I must block it or check the king. After check, you need to step back on the last rank. Why not getting the king onto e6? What would be the problem of this move? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe like blundering the rook. Yeah, probably blundering the rook would be a good idea, but bad, hey. wor worse idea would be to controlling the promotion square. Therefore, it is a problem due to the skewer <gasps> and promoting square is covered because if the king would be yes, here and the white to move then it's here or there it depends hey, what Laurie, what kind would you like to win and that's why you are forcing to go into the last rank after the last rank it's check if you are going here and now i am going here because the check would not be that great and then i physically block the pawn the king is pretty far away i'm going for the rook on b5 and the rook must step back if the rook step back from the sixth rank i'm capturing the pawn and if the rook is on the A file, I'm getting B6 and capture the pawn next move. Yeah, that's not very good. Does it make sense? And now yeah. I capture the pawn and the end game is drawn. Therefore, so if you do no not want... to win it. Yes, there is the way to win it. And the way to win it is to learn about queen versus rook end game. <laughs> thank you for the soup. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chigorin. Okay, so... So... Oh! Yes, no, this please, is the way how please, to win it. Please. Don't tell me, don't tell me, no. It's no, up to you, no. it's up to you. I am no, just like... I am just telling the truth. I am just telling the truth. It's up to you if you accept it or not. Okay, so I don't basically, basically I have a choice. Either I draw mm -hmm. or either I'm humiliating myself with the rule. No, 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 it's not and... at this moment. I mean in tournament, because at, at the moment will not allow you to humiliate yourself. That okay, which well, that okay. which that which rules are not allowing me for that. I need to protect my channel. Okay, right. So imagine I'm playing the tournament and I have the position with white. So I have the choice with playing like rook on h6 and drawing. Okay, or I have a choice to go for a winning continuation, which is playing the queen against the rook. Mm -hmm. And that's humiliating myself and possibly drawing as well. As I do not know how to win I, that. I wouldn't, I would Which choice, guys, would you do? Would I wouldn't you... say humiliate, I would say to learn the new stuff. This would be a little oh, bit more precise. Oh, look like that in my head, trust me. Yeah, maybe maybe no. in your head it would be a little bit different, <laughs> but I would treat it as the learning opportunity. Because if you want to become a really good player, really I good know, chess know, coach and really good streamer, you need to possess some knowledge and skills at the same time. Enter entertainment is one thing, but a little bit of knowledge is another thing that it needs to be addressed as well. I know, I know. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that's why after rook c6 check, this is the attempt to win. And now, king doesn't need to capture because you assumed the king must capture but you probably forgot about one interesting idea <gasps> oh, right, oh okay. it's for the content yes it's for the content i just help you not to win queen versus rock <laughs> okay well that's good that and now good. imagine the yeah. rook would be on the h2 and it's yeah totally different story that's what i wanted to tell that's why sometimes it's not the best solution to have the rook on the last rank but close to the last rank sometimes and this is the case 
because of the skewer on the diagonal, you need to have the rook a little bit up, not to make this embarrassment stuff. Okay. Uh huh. But take notice, you do not need to capture the rook. You can do it a different way if you do not want to learn queen versus rook. You can play king d5. Because no, take I'm not this. I'm not saying I don't want to learn. Obviously, I want to learn, but I'm not going to maybe, learn it today. <laughs> yes, maybe not learn today. And today is not, not the goal. Therefore, we'll not be learning today. Therefore, don't worry. And now, king d5. And now, if you put the queen on the last rank, it's a blunder again. Because after the attack on the last rank, this is the trade. And now, it's a draw. Therefore, after king d8, you play a little bit different way. What is, okay. the, what is the move right now? Why to play and win? Why to play and win? Um, well, it would be... It's pretty similar position, but there is one important difference. Rook h6? No, 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 sorry, that was a joke. That was, that was not a funny joke. Rook h6 would be good for black. Very good for black. You would no. help black immensely. Uh huh. But what about yeah, white? Was... If you just play for white, how would you improve the position? <laughs> um... Well, now I can play Rook on A6, right? Yeah. What is the difference changed. between the previous position and this one? Because the king is more far away. Yeah, the king can escape right here because the king is not covering B6 square any longer. Therefore, okay. Rook A6. Now, the threat to promote is not a problem because after the check, you step back this way. Uh, sorry, this way or the other way because after the capture, Rook for the queen is king, Rook versus king. And after mm -hmm. Rook on the last rank, Check again. You are just escaping via this square because the king is not on c5 any longer. Okay. And that's why after the check, it's a win because either you just capture the rook and allow the pawn to promote or to get onto the last rank. And after last rank, you ask, you accept the fact that you need to know how to checkmate with king rook against the king. And I assume you know it. Okay. I assume it. Oh, um, well, Damien, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say because I keep saying I know, I know, I know, and someone uh, back in the chat said that I know everything. No, I, I, don't, oh. I don't know anything. If this you if you know different. everything, probably you need to be called the or oracle, no, right? I, if you know I everything. Know, <laughs> I don't know anything. I know nothing. And that's why we are learning. And this is the position that you need to know that it looks simple. Looks simple because we started with this one that we just mentioned that we need to build the selfie and after yes. the selfie there are let's say the most uh, stubborn resistance is to having king d6 king d7 is not a not a great idea king c5 is too weak because of the king b8 and yeah. king c7 or king c8 but king d6 is the most stubborn idea to make into this position okay and let D6. me know if you understood okay. all of the ideas right here i'm just replaying to show you what was that yes because a little bit of more stuff and this I is think the I did, yeah. But there's a comment in the chat from Warrior that, uh -huh. uh, what did he say? One second. The easy position so far, but I don't because he he's hungry for like challenging positions. But I feel like it's better for me to cover those positions because either I use some things, but not everything. So before I move to those difficult ones, I just want to like make sure that I know 100% those easiest ones. Because this is the base for anything I'm going to learn, uh, you know, later yeah. on. So, I agree. So, I agree. It's yeah, better to start with the top. easiest position, know them very well, in case if you have the more complex position and you transit into the simple one. And if you do not know the simple one, how to convert, it would be a little bit difficult emotionally. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, warrior, just uh, don't rush. <laughs> Uh, Don't worry, we will make it, right? Yes. Another one. Okay, so obviously I am playing white and I'm the stronger side and mm -hmm. the pawn is going this direction. Just Yeah, the pawn is going up mm -hmm, on the second rank and it's going up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Um... Okay. So one second. Mm -hmm. uh, just was catching with the chat. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all good. Okay, so pawns going that way, and um, it's a big difference because my king is on the h one. So mm. 
Look about the black skin, because it's very important to understand the position of the black okay, skin. Okay, so this is, yeah, you, sorry, I actually didn't look at this. So it's very important, the fact that the rook is cutting off, cutting off the king. So that's very good. And I wouldn't move that rook for now. Mm -hmm. um, so it's buying us a little bit of time. But I would, ideally, that's what I was thinking, because I actually was questioning, should I have the rook behind the pawn or should I have the rook on the side of the pawn? And I would think the side of the pawn because I'm cutting out the king, right? Yeah, it's better so... to have the rook multifunction, multifunction, because if you have rook just behind the pawn and it is not cutting off the king, the king will bring for help for the pawn. And if you have okay. the move on the side of the pawn or in front of the pawn, it doesn't matter. But it's multifunction, especially cutting of the king, most cases it's a way better. Okay, mm -hmm. so I was thinking, I don't know if that will work, but like my idea was rook going on f4 because then we have the b4 move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the rook is protecting, because I assume rook f4 and rook b8 will be the next move, and then I play b4, so the rook is actually protecting my pawn. Mm -hmm. But that but one also... problem with this approach, if I'm not, uh, uh, if I understood correctly, is that you allow the king to infiltrate, correct? Because no. Rook will no longer cut off the F file. Is that correct or am I wrong? No, I told about Rook F4 and B4 pawn. Yeah, but Rook F4 and B4 pawn or Rook B4? No, no, no. Before pawn B4. Okay. Pawn before the pawn. <laughs> it's B4 no, no. like a square and before some like previous. <laughs> and oh, I was confused. No. <laughs> yeah, I know it, I know it, but I was confused uh, listening about this before and after, so like, oh, something is wrong, either with my mind, even with understanding. I uh, know, uh, no, sorry. That is okay, <laughs> it's okay. Take notice that we can start with the pawn immediately, immediately, because now the rook can attack the pawn right here or right there, it doesn't matter, but we have the king cut off. And after, yes. king gets and, closer, because rook and, it by itself okay. is not winning. Sorry? And also the other thing I've noticed that if you if we play a rook on f4, mm -hmm. we give the space because like now we can't really move our king in front of the rook because if we cover the rook, mm -hmm. we give the time for the king to uh, bring the king to the game or even rook f8. That's another thing. Yeah. But if we play rook f4, we have the space for the king to go behind the rook mm -hmm. rather than in front of. Yeah, that's correct. Very correct. But one important yeah. stuff is that uh, if you have the pawn that you can advance without any, uh, let's say, other moves, it's a great idea unless you lose this pawn or the pawn would be easily captured. Therefore, okay. you are just threatening to have the pawn after this. I'm just showing simple idea to make the selfie. Yeah. And selfie. take notice, selfie can be done from two sides from the pawn. That's very important. Therefore, you make two selfies, even better. Mm. Two selfies, not okay. just one. Cool. <laughs> And that's why you are just pushing the pawn before, because you are just going forward and you must you must push the pawn anyway. After okay. that, king gets closer, you're pushing the pawn anyway. Rook blocks, because finally uh, rook needs to uh, go, because the king cannot approach the pawn due to okay. the blockade on the F file. After that, af after the rook uh, attacks the pawn, you have the choice to either put the rook behind the pawn or inside of the pawn. Which one okay. would you prefer? Um, hold on. I would say the side, but then I'm just a little bit concerned about the king going on the g6. Remember the uh, long side and the short side idea? Do you remember this? Because the short side and long side idea are pretty much yeah. reflective many times at these type of positions. Okay, hold on. Then I don't know that yet. One second, just want to say thank you, uh, Jan, for 333 beats, and Jan as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, but now going back to the position, um, well, in I don't see that massive yet for the long side. I'll just I'll just help you because sometimes it needs to be rotation, okay? okay? And therefore I know that you may have a little bit of trouble to visualizing that, but it's perfectly fine. Look about this. This is the pawn and we have the long side right here and short side right here. The short side is on the red and the, uh, and the long side is without the pawn. The long side is on the green. Can you see that? Okay. And this is the same because it is the concept, not the position, but the concept. And now, if you could imagine the king, where the king would be? I mean, white king, according to this concept. The king should be on the, like short the, on the short side. Yeah. Yes. And therefore, if I just put the red, the red king should be right here. Can you see that? Uh, on a6. Yes. 
on A6. Yeah. And the okay. rook should be on the long side. And therefore, what would be better? To have the rook on the long side right here, or have the rook on the same side as the pawn? This is something like a neutral. What is better? To have the rook on the long side, or do not have in the wrong side? In, a, in this concept, according to this concept. On to... the long side, right? Yeah, and that's why you're playing rook f5. Take notice that I know that sometimes you may be confused about the ideas because, for example, Tarrash, one of the German master, just mentioned that rook behind the past pawn, right? Therefore, some like the axiom that you probably see. No, no, no. It is the Tarrash. He just mentioned that. Therefore, I need to listen to this every time. And therefore, it may be a little bit confusing. But yeah. if you understand the idea that rook is multifunctional, multifunctional, it's okay. way more important. And at the same time, if you just understand the idea of the long side, it would be even simpler to imagine why this is that much important. What about that? Okay. But what about, so I assume if king goes on the g6 will be rook c5. Rook attacking the, uh, sorry, king attacking the rook. And take notice, the idea being to have rook on the long side. Remember why rook on the long side is that much important? Because uh, of its mobility. Right? Yeah. You just mentioned that the king cannot attack rook that easily because rook has the boom mobility, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why, uh, unless you blunder the rook, having the rook on these three squares, you need to have the rook on the other squares. And now the question, not about the position, but about the ideas. Where the rook would be the best located uh, if we just assume the rook does not leave the fifth rank? Where would, would be the best located? I do not mean the square, I mean the idea. Well, I thought it was rook on c5 because of rook on c6 uh, check. Yeah, but check is not 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 the key. You're very close. You're you are okay, perfect well, with the with the square, but a little right. bit explanation. Go so, on. so there is the idea that I have in my head mm -hmm. about the math of called selfie that if I would somehow manage to have my pawn on the b7, I have that. C8. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> yeah, I can see the selfie idea is perfectly in, in, integrated into your mind. Therefore, probably I will be best known if you just make the selfie ideas all of the time in Rukan games. It will be. It is because of Finker teacher. He asked you yeah. to make the selfie all over, all over again, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you are correct. You are correct. Oh, okay. But one more explanation that would be even more important is the rook c5. <laughs> but what about rook c5 with the idea about the kin? What would you say about the king and the rook c5? I mean, in general sense. Well, they want to be far away from the... Bravo. Like we were speaking before, there has to be three, more than three moves. Yeah, uh, yeah. Of course, at, at this moment, the, the three files is not that important. That's why I do not address it, okay? It would be important, but at this moment, it's not that much. It's a way more important to have the rook as far away as possible because the king would have a lot of moves to get into the rook and to attack it and force it to move or being protected. Okay. Does it make sense right now? No. Can you say again? Sorry. One more time. Sorry, I'll just uh, uh, I will just thank you for the for the, the bits. Thank you very much, Gen moves for uh, cheering 500 bits. I really appreciate it. By the way, we are having the collaboration with Tosh with uh, Tosh Queen, uh, our friend Toshia, and we are learning about Wuken games. And I'm doing the best, the best as I can. So far, I integrated into to Toshia mind the idea of selfie due to the TikTok style. Therefore, I probably will be the celebrity. <laughs> And now the weather. If you just mentioned the rook that is attacked, rook is having the multifunctional stuff because rook is cutting off the kin and protecting the pawn, right? If you have the rook as far away as possible, the kin would have a lot of moves to invest to attack the rook. That's what I mean. And if, if let me know if this is the idea that okay. you understand. Right. The rook yeah, should be exactly. as far away from the kin, not to able the king to harass the rook. Okay. What about that? Well, yeah. Makes I mean, sense? And now, pretty natural. ideally, it would be the move. But this move have some, some drawback. What would be the drawback of this move? Except of jumping over the pawn. What would be the drawback of this move? Um, you mean, like, with the rook? Like, oh, hold on. If rook could jump over the pawn, what would well, be the drawback of this move? I mean, the drawback in the sense that move is not good enough due to one detail. Well, the, there's a short side. Bravo. 
<laughs> Here we have it. Yes, yes, that's correct. You are working excellent. Yes, because this would be perfect due to the king, because the king would be having a lot of squares to attack the rook. But the problem is because we just mentioned that this is the short side. Short well, side is, is for one of the problems that there is a pawn on the way. Yeah, <laughs> but the pawn on the way is not a problem. No, no, take yeah, notice. No we we do not care about it, of course. Just jump over. Yeah, we just yeah. jumping over, uh, pr uh, pressing the clock, and we are we are just pro we are just assuming that our opponent will not notice. And if the beater gets into the board, we are just saying like that. I'm not yeah. sure what he is talking about, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the over the board game. And now, if we just mentioned that rook should be as far away from the king, this would be the perfect spot. But rook shouldn't get into the king's way because the king should be on the short side of the pawn, correct? Yeah. And that's why you cannot capture the pawn, because as far as I know, it's not allowed. You are going as far away, but not on the short side and not capturing its own pawn, because you need to have the pawn promoted. Okay. Does it make sense right now? Yeah, I think so. Okay. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to do it for the content as well. <laughs> no. <gasps> See, I shouldn't tell you now, because no. <laughs> I'm learning as well. I'm learning <laughs> as well. It's not you who are learning from me. We are learning from each other. Now, mm. rook c5. Rook c5, because of the idea of possibility to make a selfie, great one, but at the same time, to put the rook as far away and cut off the king on the fifth rank. Because mm -hmm. the king cannot get there, and the king needs to go here, and in the same time, the king needs to waste at least four moves to attack the rook. And then, okay. we have the time to bring the king closer. Does now make right. sense? Y yes. It's better. No, it does, yes. Okay, because if it's not better, I need to train a, a little bit harder. Because my ideas are crazy, but some people say that, Finker teacher, you are great in explanation. And I'm, so okay. I am asking why I'm that great, that sometimes people are asking me, Finker teacher, you just make me pretty much confused in my mind. Okay, so there's an important question in the chat. Go on. There's people that keep joining during mm -hmm. the stream. Uh, hello, I just tuned in. What does selfie mean? What does selfie oh. mean? Or Would you like to address it? <laughs> yeah? Do you know when you turn your smartphone and you have the, the camera on that you can see yourself and then, yeah. yeah. No, but it's only a joke, right? This is on so. TikTok. It's not a joke. It's on TikTok. It's a, it's a, it's a le legend. But uh, chess, <gasps> at chess, what is the idea about the... Uh, selfie. About selfie? Can you tell us? Uh, it's called... It's a shortcut from self-winning uh, mechanism. Yes, self-winning and... mechanism or construction. Mm-hmm. So it's more, it's like, um, how, how would it look like if re but let's I pretend there are no rooks, like. let's pretend there are no rooks. How would you, the, what most would need to be played to create that, uh, create that, the uh, pawn selfie? The has to be on the seven or the second rank just before the promotion. Mm -hmm. And the, the idea is of the rook going on C8, but yes. we need the king supporting the pawn as well. So like, you know. By yeah, the way, self, self, okay. uh, selfie means just the rook and the pawn. It doesn't involve the king. All right. King okay. is just an obstacle for the selfie because king is just uh, blocking the view. All right. Okay. And therefore, yes. selfie means that we are just having the pawn on the seventh rank and the pawn is protecting the rook on the promotion square. Okay. And now we have the position that the king is progressing even more. We are getting with the king again. And now important. Mm -hmm. What was the idea? We just mentioned that if the king attacks the rook, where the rook should be? On the c6. I do not mean the square, I mean the idea. Idea, not the square. Oh. Well, the idea is of a selfie, right? Selfie is a little bit too premature. Too, too premature. Mm, too okay. early. Mm. Maybe let's put um. it a little bit back. Do you remember the idea that you were a little bit concerned about this move? Yes. Mm -hmm. What was your concern? Well, that the king is too close. And, mm -hmm. and what I told you to do with the rook? Come and uh, <laughs> jump over the path. Yes, no. as far away from the king, no, 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 but no. rook shouldn't get on the short side and it shouldn't capture its own pawn because the pawn needs okay. to be promoted. Therefore, so the as far away from the king as possible. Okay. Right? As far so... as possible. And after the king attacks the rook, what rook should go? Well, the rook should go on as far away from the king. As far as possible. Excellent. And now take notice what is this construction all about. The pawn function is not allowed the king to okay. reach the c6 square. The rook is covering the fifth rank and in a moment we'll just improve the position even more. Okay. 
is now does it make sense right now yes okay now the rook is cutting off the e file because they do not want us to help the pawn with the promotion right okay as simple as that they are just cutting we are we were cutting the king we are cutting the king on the fifth rank and black are cutting the our king on the e file therefore two cuts off we are just going closer rook is cutting off again because they cannot improve the position away more and now we are going rook g5 what's the idea behind it so the idea behind it is um Hmm. Um, I don't know that. Yes, it is a little bit uh, mysterious move. Look about this. What's what hap what happens next? After king step back, we are going rook g5, cutting off the king on the sixth rank. We are just waiting for 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 black. And now after rook b1 attacking the pawn, we are just making the selfie. This is what you, what you predicted 15 moves ago. Okay. Mm. Selfie is possible, even if it is not on the, technically on the last rank, because normally it should be on the last rank, but you can do it a little bit previous stage. And now at this moment, the king needs to step back, rook c5. Um, okay, rook on c5, right? Mm -hmm. And now, is it possible to win this position at this moment? Um... I wouldn't think so. Yeah, why? Because the king is in front of the pawn, in front yeah. of the pawn, and the king was just transferred in, in front of the pawn. Next move, king attacks the pawn and captures, uh, rook captures the pawn and game over. Okay. And therefore it was not position that, w that was possible to win. Why? Because of this cutoff. Because of this cutoff. Can you see that? Uh, it, yes. It looked like the position was pretty easy to win due to the activity of the pawn, the rook, and so on. But the timer of the rook to cut off the king, and I just told you that rook and the pawn cannot win by itself against the king. Okay. And that's why, as long as you do not have the king in front of the pawn or close to the pawn, you are not you are unable to win the position. Okay. Does it so make sense? Again, if I have, can you just repeat the last sentence? If you do not have the king to support the pawn, it's yes. impossible to win such positions. Impossible. Okay. All right. Impossible. And that's why the idea of cutting off right here was the crucial one for black to defend this position easily. Okay. I, yeah, so I understand that now. That mm -hmm. wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to win that because king cannot support Yes, because you pawn. do not have the king to support the pawn. The simplest answer. And actually there are two cuts off. One over the e file, the other on the fifth rank. Therefore, both sides are just, let's say, uh, flexing. Okay. And now the classical stuff that probably you already recognize. What is this position? The, the next one? Da, it's a Lucina. Mm -hmm. This is the Lucina. And Lucina has another name. Do you know what is this name? Some like the, uh, let's say, uh, the, the technique. The bridge. Yes, building the bridge. Mm -hmm. And now with the building the bridge idea is the stuff that you need to uh, learn pretty well because especially if there is the fast time control you are tired and, and you are just not uh, feeling well and so on you need to know it very very well and i'll try okay. to provide the so. questions to help you to understand a little bit deeper now if you can explain us what is the idea to win it i will be very grateful well if i would wake up at 2 a.m and someone would ask me i probably would play rook on e2 mm -hmm. rook on e2 what's the point of rook and e2 Cutting out the king from away from the pawn, mm -hmm. that's one thing, uh, and well, that's basically the main thing. But the next uh, plan for me is to put a rook on on e4. Rook e4, right? What is the idea uh, behind rook e4? It's creating the bridge. So I'm trying. Um, Remember before when we were like escaping in a zigzag kind mm -hmm. of move, mm -hmm. and then the next move it's the rook to cover from the check. Mm -hmm. There is perfectly fine, but there is one small issue with the uh, with the plan. There is one small well, issue. We might have to go kind of sorry. Yeah. This way. I yeah, but escaping escaping at this moment is not that much a problem, but rather the idea that I may seem a little bit less efficient because at this moment... Oh, your selfie, sorry. 
selfie is another story that probably will be the better, the best understood from this from this lecture and from this session. This is not this is not the bridge, so that's different. Technically, technically, it's a bridge. Therefore, it's the idea is uh, perfectly fine. But the no, no, this, the, the bridge is okay as well. But the first plan of the building the bridge is not precise, and therefore it is not going to work. Do you know why? Oh, okay. Well, hold on. Actually, mm -hmm. one issue with the plan. All of this stuff is perfectly fine, but one issue that plan is not going to work. Right. So I could play rook d2. Mm -hmm. And why rook d2? What is the reason behind it? Well, if I could, I'm cooling out the king. Yeah. But if the king will decide to actually go to an e6, mm -hmm. I can do the check. And if I do a check and the king goes back back on d7, mm -hmm. I basically won a move, so I'm a move ahead, mm -hmm. which is great. But if the king will decide to like go on the f6, then I am allowed to play king on e8 and I am promoting my pawn on f8. Everything perfectly clear, but there is one issue. Okay. And the issue is a positive and uh, not positive uh, message. Which one Actually, no, I don't would you like to, to start with? After king on e6, I just play king on e8 straight away. Yes, that's correct. The king e8, not, not rook a1 a, a check. This is the first one. Yeah. And the second one, the second one, if king e6 is the check. It's a perfect one because you are just having the opportunity to push the pawn. And why, why this check is the necessity? Why this check not getting into the rook onto the, this one? Why this one? What is the reason? Because previously you just mentioned rook ito, and then just going with the plan, it was not correct, not precise. Okay, it was not correct because if I actually would walk away with my king away from the pawn, and maybe differently. Okay, okay, okay. If I would uh -huh. perform the bridge the uh -huh. way I said it, that it's going to happen on let's say g4, and the black just exchanged, there was king on e7 capturing my pawn. Excellent, bravo. Yes, the king must be excellent. You just know really well this concept, even if there are some let's say uh, small adjustment needed. You need to cut off the king two files. Yes, two files. One file is not enough. Therefore, if you just put the rook onto the e1, uh, sorry, e2, you are cutting off the king one file away from the pawn. It's not, it's not enough. You need the king needs to be cut off two files, or as you just mentioned, if the king gets to e6, it's winning after king a8. Therefore, okay. it's perfectly clear. And therefore, if you just make this idea, it would be winning pretty easily. But there is one idea that you can, sorry, it could, it, it would be winning uh, technically building the bridge. But there is one more idea that probably you already know how to win this position. <laughs> and I'm smiling because it's the best concept you learned so far. Selfie. Of course. <laughs> Where to put the rook to make the selfie? Onto the E or On G? The e oh, or right. E8 or G8. Which one do you prefer? Oh. Because you can make two selfies with rook e8 and rook g8. Which one is better and why? Um, well, I would say on a g8. Yes, but why? Because before when you were explaining to me when selfie doesn't really work, see the king is on the d7, so he has the option to go on the d8 and I will have a bit of a trouble with performing my selfie. Where well, on the G8, I don't have to worry about that. One more time. I was a little bit lost. Sorry about it. I was uh, analyzing so, too much. Can you show okay. with, the, with the arrows? It would be easier for me to address as well. Right. Let's so pretend to just play, make some. Mm -hmm. Let's say I'm going for a selfie on the, yeah. uh, on the E8. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the king is already on D7. Let's pretend before... black does nothing unless they are forced. Okay? They does nothing. Okay. Well, it's controlling They here. do nothing. Mm-hmm. Well, you have to do something because if I'm going to do an e7, yeah. But let's pretend for the sake of simplicity, black is simply frozen. Black is not reacting anyway. They give you the opportunity to do anything you wish, unless there is the capture or check. You know what I mean? Yes. Maybe I'll just show it with the moves. Maybe it would be okay. a little bit easier. If yes. you go here Please. for whatever reason, I need to move because of the leeches. You are going here. I'm going here. You have that. We have the selfie. But is it winning? No, because it's a king on d8 and d7. Can you be a little bit more specific? Because probably you're right, but I need to be uh, sure if you understand the idea. 
Uh huh. And I'm going here. Yes, that's correct. And like, I'm just going back and forward. Uh huh. And what is so the problem with this? Excellent. What's the issue with this? Well, it's a draw. Well, it's not a draw, but like, I have to go. Maybe why it is a draw? Maybe what? It, why it is a draw? Assuming that black does nothing, why it is a draw? You're very close. Because this, like, the king is blocking my king to to walk away from behind the pawn, and then the rook is blocking the king. Yeah. Bravo! That what that's what I wanted to 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 hear. Yes, that's correct. The king cannot get outside the pawn. That's what I want to say. Uh, sorry, what I want to know, know about this position if I want to win it. The king must leave the escape square, otherwise the pawn cannot move. If the pawn cannot move, the pawn cannot promote. And therefore, even though this selfie is a beautiful one, the TikTok will be having a lot of views, but it does not work that efficiently as the other one. Why the other selfie work perfectly? Uh, because I don't have to, because it, it, it's like enabling, like it's helping me to go with the king on the, on the G4. And why it is helping you? Why? Because it's like a bridge kind of thing. Bridge is different story. Bridge for, I know, for but let's say like a small one. Yeah, but but take notice that we already have this position. Have this position when the king was on a8 and pawn a7. Remember? It was the idea okay. of the rook as well, and you were escaping either c8, either c5, and you said that you are just uh, understanding that. Remember? Yeah. And it is the same idea. The same idea because take notice that pawn was on a7, rook b8. There was just one possibility of the selfie, but why selfie was uh, why selfie was possi the possibility to win this position, the previous one? Why? There was one reason. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm gonna be lost. <laughs> probably you may be lost because I'm asking probably probably too many questions because rook was forced to give up this file. Okay. Rook was forced to give up this file. Now we are not forcing Rook to give up this file because I do not have the Rooks controlling this square. I am okay. controlling the other one and if you put the Rook onto G8, you are forcing the Rook to leave this file. And that's the key. Yeah, I guess. Forcing yeah. to leave the file and that's why you're winning. And that's why at this moment, if you want to win it a little bit less comfortably without me memorizing the Lucina and so on, you are playing Rook H2 with the idea of getting into the selfie that's it and it's winning okay and you do not even you, you don't you do not need even to uh, put the lucina or building the bridge in the action after rook g3 because black wants to stop the film for getting outside right we are getting mm -hmm. either here i would i would prefer either this one this, this would work as well now king gets here to try to attack you at somehow after this this is go over because you cannot capture due to the Rook and the king and promoting next move. Technically, because it's different different way as well. Technically, it would be even better right here. So like help uh, easier to understand and memorize. And then okay. rook rook gets here. And now very important. Rook needs to leave the g file. If the rook needs g file, most often it attacks the pawn. After that, we have the selfie. But what is most important? The king gets out of the zone with the zigzag. Okay. Without losing okay, the pawn. Is now easier? Mm hmm. Okay, excellent. If I confuse you a little bit, sorry, because sometimes I'm just analyzing probably a little bit too much. Okay. And now no, this... no, it, it's got, it's, now it's quite a lot of information, so... Uh, yes, it may be a little I... bit overload. Mm -hmm. No, like, I mean, I understand now, so that this is good, but I'm just afraid to gain any more because I don't want everything to mix up. Uh, take I notice, it, it's natural process. I know that you may be a little bit afraid of this, but this is a natural process. If the knowledge will not start to mix up and some like to uh, crash, you'll not build the new knowledge, the integrated one. Therefore, okay. I'll just use the metaphor. It is not insulting that's a metaphor. If I am not going to help you to get stupid in the chess sense, you are unable to learn anything. It will be just the, let's say, feeling that you're just learning because you're listening, but you need to integrate that. And the, the faster you, the faster I help you to feel stupid in the sense of destroying all of the, let's say, previous, uh, let's say, elements, the faster you build that new construction that would be even stronger than selfie on TikTok. I was just waiting for Damien's comment after <laughs> what you said. I was just like, what is he going to say? 
I don't even want to listen about that. I know that he commented with the educational style that you are going said, great and you are going even better. He just said, you don't need to make me stupid <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I don't want to comment because it's not educational part. I know. I mean, it's okay. Next it's one. Okay to, you know, we, it's okay to have jokes. Sometimes. Yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. But take notice, I would rather try to focus Thanks on the about, educational yeah. part because I'm the yes. best at this one. Now we have the same position, but shifted to the right. And now what would be the idea to win this position? Is it possible to use the previous idea? Um, is it possible? Well, no, obviously, because we don't have that space. Yeah, we do not have the I file. A, B, C, D, A, H, G, H, I. We do not have the I file. And therefore, at this moment, you must, because there are no other ways, you must use the Lucina or building the bridge position. And now how okay. to start with? You can just play it out because you just explained it. Now we can play it out. Right. Mm -hmm. So I am going right to play and to... win using with the Lucina position. Yes. And now if I go king f6, what do you do? Yes. And after that, you are just pushing the pawn. I cannot stop it. Therefore, it's the, be the, the worst uh, defense. Therefore, I'm just going at this moment with king d7. And now please okay. continue. Uh, well... I could just play here. Mm -hmm. Yes, rook e4, having on the fourth rank. Now I am just waiting. I am not going to help you to escape with this h file. Yes, that's correct. I am just attacking you, forcing you back into the pawn. You do not collaborate. Yes, you are not getting from the square g6 because uh, onto f5, h5, because you will be yeah. losing the pawn. Now I'm going here. I'm just making a little bit difficult. What are you going to play? Remember? Um, y y hold on. Mm -hmm. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. No, it's not. No, no. It's all good. I have it all under control. It's a trap. No, or maybe it's not. not. It's not. Um, I am just going to... Is it possible to make the <laughs> make the make I yes? Know, I know, I know. Yes, it's make this idea. Is it possible? No. Nope. Why not? Because if a rook takes on a g7. Yes, correct. By the way, mm -hmm. it is the mistake probably nobody knows, or maybe not that many people know. Danny Ranch, uh, Danny Ranch, the CEO second. of Chesscom, recorded the video about this uh, about this uh, building the bridge uh, uh. idea, and he played rook e5 on the video. I'm not kidding. Ah. On the video, oh, on Chesscom, no. on the video. I'm not sure if it was corrected. And nowadays mm. there is the correct solution. But he played it rookie five, and when he plays some like oh black plays something, he just make this stuff and so on. And he just played this type of let's say move. I was disco that? discovering that due to the analysis, and therefore okay. the only video that I saw that uh, they were wrong at this moment, and that's okay. why this is a trap. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, I get that. So I'm just thinking about trying to play. Rook on the d4, but I don't know if that has any sense. Rook d4 is not that great because it would d4, be a blunder. D4, or I d4. Said. Okay. After Sorry. rook d4, I'm attacking your rook. No problem. I know. Mm -hmm. um, can I just go? Uh, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Oh, sorry, it was this one. Well, I would just play rook h4 now. Rook h4? After, uh, sorry, right here no, after this? No, no, no. Or check no. and then. Sorry. No. Check d4 and then. And now rook first before. check and now, yes. Yes, rook h4 with the selfie, right? Yes. And now I am going here. Are you going to make the selfie? No, not yet. I am going to play rook on h5 now. Mm -hmm. Yes, rook h5 would be a good idea because now. I cannot stop this threat after you going here, and there is no no uh, stop stopping of this idea. If I go check right, right here, what do you do? I'm just doing the bridge. Yes, and if I capture, I'm just taking the promoting pawn. Yes, and I am too far away from the pawn, and you are just promoting. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And if I go instead of the check, if I go with the rook right here, what do you do? Just waiting. 
Yes, now we can do it because after the capture, and I am a little bit too far away. And that's why cutting off with the knight would be good as well. <laughs> if you want to do draw comfortably, it would be perfect. And that's why it's one of the idea. The other idea, the other idea at this position, in a moment I'll just show you what is this one, is rook e6. Of course, this one would be easier to remember about the selfie, therefore I would recommend it. But this one is another, as you can see, that now the king can go either onto the d7 or d5. And now, after the king gets into the d7 square, you are having this idea without the contact with the king. And then you are just making this one. Okay. Can you see that? Push back the king, and then you are just getting rook e5. And if the king gets the other way, you are going with the rook on the last rank, and you can okay. just create this selfie right here, because the king is too far away, or you can escape right here if the king will be attacking, and the pawn is going right there. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you just understood the idea about the uh, Lucina and about building the bridge. Let's go for the next one. Why to play and try to win. Okay, so... Um, okay, uh, right, so in that right, why to play mm -hmm. and try to win. Yes. So first what I would do, I would cut, cut out the kink. Yeah, excellent. What is the idea behind it? Well, I do not... The last thing I want is having the king on my promotion square. Mm -hmm. So that's... I don't want at all. So I have to do that. And then... Then I'm worried about king and the pawn. But that's my first priority. Yeah, excellent. You are cutting off the king because the king needs to be in front of the pawn to stop the pawn. And rook against the king, pawn and uh, rook is not able to stop the promotion. <clears throat> That's why cutting off is the priority in rook endgames, especially cutting off the king, because the king is pretty powerful. And therefore, after this, rook check, because I am trying to attack you and trying to do something. What do you res How do you respond? Well, I'm just going to go on the c6 to, yeah. to push my pawn. And now I'm attacking the pawn behind the pawn. I am just waiting for you. Yes, I'm attacking you. Excellent. Attacking the pawn. Not giving you escape square with these two files yeah. due to the king on the... Give me a second. Just a little bit. One more time. The rook on the b file, the king on the d file. Now I'm waiting for you. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting again. And now again you can do two ideas. That's let's, idea number one. Let's check it. Let's check it out this position. Can you recognize the idea of selfie? Yes. Because you will be able to zigzag. Take notice, you're able to zigzag. Okay, if the well, A that's... file would not be possible, you will not be able to zigzag. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's up to you which one you prefer. But the selfie is even easier. If you are not forced to make the Lucina, selfie is the, I would say, five times easier to make it. Okay. That's my so, um, estimation. Mm -hmm. Right. So, well, okay, I can play Rook on A1. Yeah, and go on. Do that. Yes, this is the simplest. You but do then not... I don't do the bridge. Oh, you want to have the bridge. Okay. No, I mean, this one, it's, it's black smooth, by the way. Okay, black smooth is just making Rook B3. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I'm standing. Yes, and now after the Rook B7, maybe let's play out a few more moves. Now it's your. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So... Now, you you have the selfie. No, no, no. You have the selfie. If you have oh, the selfie, yes. you are just zigzagging with the king. The oh, selfie yeah. is done. Therefore, zigzagging, you are not getting into the file with the pawn. Okay. Right? And you are bringing closer and closer. You are attacking the rook. I am attacking the pawn. Hmm. And now promotion. And after that, you are just winning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. And now, if you would like to build the bridge, you can just build the bridge. At this moment. It's okay. Uh, all right. So. Okay. And now I'm just here and just build the bridge. Mm -hmm. I am stepping back here. Mm. Okay. I'm just waiting for you. Okay. Check. 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 And the king is too far away. The king gets closer, but it's not in the square of the pawn. And you promote into the knight. Excellent. 
<laughs> That's correct. This is the way how you can draw the position with promoting the pawn after a lot of effort. Perfect example. Another one. Hey. Uh, hey, now we have Fox. this position. Yeah. And now how would you like to continue this one? Why to play and try to win? Uh, why? <laughs> why to play? Hold on, cause, because someone asked me in the chat what's my rating and diamonds is 1200 and I do want to defend myself because I am, I am almost 1900. I'm 18, 9, 1898. Uh, okay, so now how I do this position. Mm -hmm. So I already did the most important thing, which I already caught the king off. Yeah. And now I just have to. Uh, you need to improve the position. Well, I can just push the pawn. Yes, you can push the pawn. I'll be attacking the pawn. Okay. So Give me I'm a second, just... I'll check out one more stuff because I'm not sure if I correctly... Yes, but I cannot do it because it would be losing. Now I need to do it first. Sorry about it. Just a little bit of improvement. Mm -hmm. King d7 because the, the previous one was not a good one enough. Yes, and now I am just having this idea. And this actually, was the key actually, idea. Oh, sorry. Yeah? Because I was thinking... Do you want to change the move? But I, it wouldn't really change, but I was thinking that Kingdom G4 would be better. As the first one? Yeah. Okay, try on. Mm -hmm. Yes, and now look about closely. Rook G8 attack. No, sorry. Okay. Uh, no, bring pawn on F5. Yes, pawn on F5 is another try. Okay, let's And now, can... now I mean. Okay, and now I'm just going Rook E8. Uh, sorry, not Rook E8, not Rook F8, sorry. I need to cut off the rook, not to allow you to have my king blocked. This is the idea. Mm. Because without the king, I am lost. But with the king, I can draw this position. Okay. So now what do you do? Can you see the power of this move? Why was that much important to have this move? Any other move loses and this one draws. Do you know why? Yeah, no, I, I can see that because it's forcing, it's pushing my rook away, but, but the mm -hmm. rook makes, does a very important job. Yeah. It's cutting off the king. So yeah. So now I'm in trouble. Mm -hmm. You need to make the move. Okay, it's so allow that's a draw. Yes, it's a draw. Of course, we can just have a look about the capture. After this, we are just having on one of these two squares, there is a draw, opponent game. And the other one, sorry, not this one. The idea is this one, that even if we just make a check, I'm going here and in front of the pawn, I'm drawing comfortably, either with the rook e6 idea, right? Because yes. the pawn hasn't reached, either to make the king, wait a second, after the king here, rook on the long, rook on the long side and king on the short side. Can you recognize that? The pawn. Yeah. This is the long side, therefore I'm just having the rook right here. Oh, and this is the short side, I'm having the king right here. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And that's why this position is drawn. This is the exception. This is the exception. Because normally, if you add cut off the king, it's winning. But this is the exception. Why? Because after king g4, I'll just show this variation because it was not uh, shown uh, to the end. Rook g8 check. You're stepping back from the pawn. I'm attacking. Now king g5, and now this is the rule that you mentioned about three files away, remember? Um, One, yeah. Once you just mentioned, probably 10, 10 uh, positions or 8 positions ago, you just mentioned that if the king is cut off, three files away, remember? Okay, yes. And this is the rule, and this is the rule even if this is rotated, because you may have a little bit trouble visualizing that. Can you see that? Yeah. Uh... These, are, these are three files, and the rook is on the fourth, if you just okay. rotate the board. And that's why it's a draw. If the pawn would be on one square away, up, it okay. would be it would be winning for white. Okay. And that's why at this moment you cannot stop checks from the king or attacking the pawn. And you cannot protect with the rook because if you protect with the rook, I'll just... Uh, let's have a look. If I just protect with the rook, I just simply attack the rook with the king. Now, if the rook step back, I capture the pawn. And if the rook gets on the defile, I'm cutting off the king. Okay. And that's why it's a draw. 
because the pawn cannot move forward by itself. And if you just try with the rook with this idea, I'm going immediately after the king and you need to have this idea to stop. And you cannot stop it because I cut off uh, your that, king. That's a difficult one. Yes, and you cannot do anything with this uh, position. And that's okay. why at this moment, if you have, because th this was that I mentioned that there will be the position that I tell you about these files. There are three files, uh, uh, three files between the pawn and the rook, three files is empty. And therefore, if the pawn would be one step up, it would be winning. If it is not, okay. it's a draw. Okay. Do you understand this example? Or Can any... we just go over again? Because okay. I'm, I'm a bit tired. No problem. So no problem. No problem. Taking... I, I understand everything. That it may be a little bit okay. difficult. Now I'm having rook on the fourth rank. And you see that? With mm -hmm. the three files. And that's why it's, it's a draw. And especially that I am having this idea king get into the d7 with rook e8 and giving a opportunity to exchange the rooks and getting closer with the king if the rooks step back and that's why it's a draw okay one attempt is king g4 attacking attacking again if you are just going closer attacking the king with the checks and now attacking again and you must either put the rook e4 or back with the king and with the king it would be the repetition I'm just forcing you, your king to give away and some like height from these checks. Okay. Is, is, now, is now better? Yes, this okay. is better now. And now let me know if you have any other questions about this position. Mm, in this position. Mm -hmm. It's draw because of king d7 and rook d8 to be able to cut off this barrier. And if you trade rooks, it's that it's a drawn endgame, drawn pawn endgame. Otherwise, okay. it would not be a win. Uh, sorry, otherwise yes. it would not be a draw. And if the position, if the pawn would be a little bit higher and the king would be on the f4 square, it would be a win because two files would be between this new pawn on f5, two files, and the rook would be on the third file, not three files left, uh, three files empty. Okay. What about that? Uh. Yeah, now I get that. So, this is a draw. Mm -hmm. Well, if if the king wouldn't be on d6, right? Like, be on a d5. Uh -huh. That would be you. Yes, it would be win. a win because you will not have this idea. You will not have this idea. And when I push the pawn forward, the rook yeah. is not rook is not cut off three files, but just two files. And I am having this tempo to progress with the pawn and the king. And that's okay. why it would be a, it would be a win. Mm -hmm. Is now All better? Right. Yes. Okay, excellent. Take notice that this stuff you need to repeat at some point, but it will be a little bit clearer. Yeah, no, especially the last ones because I do understand them, but I'm not as fresh as I was yeah, at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Take notice it's it's normal that sometimes you may be a little bit tired about it. And now again, pretty similar position, and this time it's white to move, and uh, and this is the the same type of idea. Look about this. The king, maybe I'll just address quickly. Look about this. Can you see that? Two files over the pawn and the third file from the pawn, right? Okay. Therefore, normally it should be lost. Normally it should be lost. But the king is not on d6 as previously, but on the square a little bit below. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? And now we use the same idea. Because if you do not address this one, I am going here with the pawn and creating the Lucina. Okay. Right? And that's why yeah. you must play it. If you do not have this move, it's lost. And after trading the rooks, it's getting into the drawn position of the king and pawn against the king. Correct? Okay. One second. I just need to grab my glasses. Okay. I have to uh, go reading. Okay. And therefore, guys, this is the position of the exception that the rook is simply cutting off, cutting off, uh, sorry, the rook is cutting off the king. And after rook, you are just escaping, not, not escaping, allowing the king to get closer for the pawn. If not, if, if not, if not the idea of allowing the uh, king to get closer, the position will be completely lost. Is now clear? Okay. Yes. Okay. Therefore, some of the positions we analyze a little bit deeper. But if I can see that you know the idea, you understand the position, we are going away faster. Okay. Okay. Next one. Why to play? Um. Why to play? Mm -hmm. So. We are pawns that are way closer to the promotion. And now first try to think what would be the forcing move. 
if after the exchange it's a winning or drawn pawn endgame. Um, after the trade of rooks. That looks like a draw. Yeah, it's a draw because the king is standing in front of the pawn. We do not calculate anything more. Therefore, you cannot, you cannot exchange the rooks. What would be the best move according to the rules that we devised? I'll just help you because it is pretty much tricky position, but I will help you the best way possible. Imagine okay. this pawn and you are having the short side and the long side a little bit, let's say, uh, different direction. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Different direction. And now, this this one that I am drawing, maybe not from the pawn, but a little bit below. This one is the long side and mm -hmm. this one up the pawn is the short side. Correct? Okay. And now, what would be the best move according to the to the idea of the short side and the long side. Uh... Do you remember when the king belongs and the rook belongs? Short side and the long side. The king and the rook. Which sides they belong to? Which side they need to be located? Well, the, the rook should be long. And the king? And the short. Yes, the king should be right here and it's winning. Mm. Got it? Okay. Because it's the short side, one of the squares on the short side, and if the king would be here, it's automatically winning. Yes. Okay. Another one, because this is the position a little bit of exceptional, is that rook is cutting, uh, rook is cutting off the black skin, right? Mm -hmm. Not to not to approach to the pawn, and therefore at this moment it's a little bit different. What I mean? First of all, you are thinking about the forcing moves. After the capture, it results in a draw. Therefore, you cannot do so. Another okay. one that you know from TikTok, from Finger Teacher's channel on YouTube, it's the position of selfie, but you cannot do so due to the trade on c7. Next one, mm -hmm. c6, you cannot do, do so due to the blunder. <clears throat> okay. And what would be the best move according to this uh, reasoning? You cannot get c8, <laughs> c7, and c6. C8, C7, or C6. C8, C7, C6. Uh, mm, so difficult. <laughs> One more time. I, I cannot C8. capture the rook because it results in a dead draw. I cannot get there due to the exchange. I cannot get there due to the blunder. Where, where would the rook be put to make trouble for black? Not C8, not C7, not C6. Well, I don't know. Let's Not C8, C7, C6. Oh, maybe C5. Excellent! C5, bravo! How did you get mm. there? How did you figure it out? <laughs> Damian you to... told me the chat. Oh, probably Damian. <laughs> no. Pro probably Damian just trolled you and he just trolled you positively because this is the move that wins. Look about this. What does this move uh, do? First of all, it doesn't trade into the drone rook endgames. Second of all, it allows you to improve with the king with the idea that you already know with building the bridge position. Got it? Yes. And that's why at this moment, white is, sorry, black is in so-called Zugzwang. Because if black step back from the rook... What Zugzwang? Yes, Zugzwang. <laughs> I don't even, I don't even, I know. I know, I know. Okay, I, know. I thought... Well, you can say it for a chat. Okay, Zugzwang is the position that one of the sides is forced to do the move but any move the site does is a bad move due to the lack of the, uh, let's say, uh, ideas they can, uh, they can realize. For example, if you have all of the pieces that are standing on the safe squares, your opponent is attacking all the other squares, you are forcing to move any, any uh, piece with the move, but this move will be a blunder. For example, you will be losing material, and this is the general concept. At uh, end games, it's not just losing material, some like uh, blundering, but rather losing the ground, losing the space, losing the squares that are important to realize the idea. Yeah. Okay. And now we have this <coughs> this stuff. And now the simplest way is to just bring the king into the closer, into sorry, into the short side of the pawn, and just providing the idea about the Lucina, right? The building bridge position. Does it make mm -hmm. sense? Mm, yes. Uh -huh. And that's why, if the rook gets here, you are just going into the king b5, a6, b7, therefore winning easily. But if the rook gets here and not allowing you to progress, what do you do? How you do progress this position? Because it's not just rook endgame, it's how to attack. Micro lesson. Uh, 
king on the b5. Mm hmm And what king b5 does? Well, it just um, if we if the if the rook, it's going with black. It's going to exchange the rook on the c5. Uh huh. Right. We are um, well not in the opposition, but the next move would be an opposition, which means we actually promoting the pawn. Mm -hmm. And this is this is the exceptional position that needs to be learned very well with the pawn and games. But you recognize that the king cannot get with c7, getting into b7. If the king could get just for one move for c7 and then b7, it would be a draw. The king cannot get there. And there is the screw of the pawn, just briefly for your audience, because somebody may not know it, the screw of the pawn. If the king leaves the screw of the pawn getting outside of this square into in any of the squares on the e-file, the pawn promotes getting b7 and b8, correct? Mm -hmm. And that's why you need to get into the square of the pawn. You cannot have these squares highlighted green because of the king and the pawn. And you need okay. to go eat either into c8. And what, right. how to continue with white? Hmm. Oh, you know, like b7. b7 would be a good idea <laughs> if the pawn would be protected. Now I know. King c6, yes, right? Yes, king c6. King c6 and b7 and king goes on a7 uh, and then I go king on c7. And That's I'm correct. And what about, there. yes, and what about if the king gets to the d8 square instead of c8? Uh, then I need to make sure I'm playing on a d6 with the opposition. Not c6? No. You said the opposition. After king c6, there is the opposition. Yeah, right? but, but I'm not the one that's making the opposition. <laughs> yeah, so I'm teasing. Me. I'm that's... teasing. Yeah, I'm teasing, of course. Yes, the opposition, but for yourself, not for your opponent. That man probably would be proud. After king c6, <laughs> king b8, and getting here. I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> It's for the content. It's for the content. It's and therefore, the this is the exceptional position that after rook trades, this is the idea that the king, uh, sorry, the king and pawn and against king is the winning. And that's why you are attacking for the second time. Take notice the rook is attacked by the king and the uh, rook. And therefore, they either trade or they step back. If they step back anyway, we are just improving and building the bridge position. Correct? Mm -hmm. And therefore, this is the general idea. And you just solve it perfectly. Yeah. I guess your coach, Damian, would be proud of you. <laughs> well, coach is a big word. The big word? I thought <laughs> I thought he was your coach. <laughs> no. Not yet? <laughs> no. Not yet. Let's pretend yet. Now the position that is super simple to understand, just, just the basic idea. If you are white, you are getting into the open file to infiltrate into the seventh rank. And now the question, why the seventh rank? Um... Well, we cutting out. <laughs> yes, cutting out the king is the first uh, first goal. What is another one? Uh, the... Well, obviously attacking a lot of pawns at the same time. Excellent. Yes, most often then... the time the pawns are on the seven, on the original position. Therefore, cutting off is the super, let's say, important. I mean, the, the most important. But at the same time, most often the time the pawns are on the seven and we are attacking them again. And now, yes. if rook gets c8. It's a bad move because we are infiltrating into the seventh. Now we are just improving the position with the pawns, going closer, disrupt or destroy the pawn cover from black and infiltrating even more and black is dead lost. Got it? Mm -hmm. And this is the example that I told you that it's better to give up the pawn and have the rook activated instead of passively playing and just waiting for your opponent to make the progress. And now the question for you, probably pretty easy, what would be different move after, sorry, not different move. What would be the correct move uh, after uh, the threat of rook d7? What would you play by black? Uh, by black, um, what else? What about... Because after rook c8, it's a lost position. What would be the better okay. idea? Um, well, I'm th I don't know because I'm sacrificing the pawn, but... Don't rook worry on, about the pawn. War rook on f8? Yes, rook f8. What's the idea behind it? Excellent. To play rook on f7. Yeah, to counterpart about the cutting of the king and at the same time protect the pawns. Excellent, yes. Even if you know it already because you're a very strong player, uh, I wanted you to uh, understand it, that this is the cutting of limiting the king, attacking the pawn, and you are counter countering with your ideas. And therefore, it's a pretty simple but pretty powerful stuff. Okay. 
Next one, a little bit more advanced, probably Martin Horshno Warrior. Greetings for you. Probably you are be happy about at this position. There is no so simple. Not so simple. How would you start with white to play? Is that for me or for Martin? Uh, no, no, it's for you. Martin needs to listen because he already knows this position. Okay. But I would like you to give mm -hmm. the answer. It's a little bit more advanced because some people say that's oh, on, so on, simple, hold on, hold on. right? No, I feel like I remember that. Um... I feel like it was something about rook a4. Rook a4? Yeah. To build the bridge? <laughs> no, but definitely, like, I have to... Hold on. First. No, but what about, like, no, I can't, I'm only messing, because... Uh, what about... Can I play, like, a4 or something? h4 or something? Uh, h4, this pawn? Mm -hmm. Yes, excellent. You need to have the pawn in one chain at this moment, there are no bishops, because the pawn h4 is protected by g3 and g3 is protected by f2. Therefore, f2 is the only weakness with the pawn chain that you need to protect. You do not need to protect this toe, you need to protect this one with the king. At the same time, you are safe of the pawns because there is no open uh, files, just the diagonals. And now, just let's say the exemplary, uh, let's say, uh, exemplary position. King f6 going into the b2 square, then making this trick right here and pushing the pawn, right? Mm -hmm. And now this is the moves that I would like to show you. Look closely because it's very important to understand it. In a moment you'll see why it is that much important. Now we have two pawns and rook f4. Rook f4 is a blunder. Why? Because black wanted to have this idea of the interference to be able to push the pawn. But actually this is a blunder. Because what? How, how black should continue? Instead of playing rook f4, what would be the better move? Sorry. Uh, instead of rook f4, yes. I would say... White plays g4, how, how to continue with black? It's a practical situation, of course, it's a little bit more advanced, but I guess you can... I don't think selfie works here. Yes, but you're very close to the idea, because the idea is pretty similar to the selfie. I do okay. not mean it's winning. But it, it is very similar for the selfie and super simple with the idea that we started with. It's my entire strategy. It's like if I don't know what to say, I say selfie and most of the time it's just a correct answer. Yeah, it is something <laughs> like in a high school in, in the Polish educational system, if you're learning mathematics at the matra exam, the final exam, if you know the delta, you know everything, <laughs> right? Delta is the one keyword, the same as selfie in Rook N games. <laughs> okay. Well, what would be the correct one? What about... Hmm. I don't know, I feel like maybe... What is the goal of the pawn? The goal of the pawn. If you have the pawn, what the pawn is the, the, the goal? You want to promote. And how can you help the pawn for the promotion? Bridge. Oh, what about rook c2? Rook c2. And what rook c2 after that, what you are going to play? What's the continuation? What's the follow up? Rook c4. Rook c4. And then? And then doing like a bridge kind of thing. Do you want to get rook a4 again? Actually, no. What's the difference? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Hold on. If you want to make a bridge, it means that the, the opponent. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Take notice. If you want to make a bridge, first of all, it cannot be the edge pawn. The edge pawn, you do not apply the bridge, bridge idea. Because this is an edge pawn. Okay. Right? Therefore, the, oh, the bridge okay. idea is completely out of the question. The first okay, of all. But what about trying to sacrifice the rook on f7? Uh, you mean rook f7 here? Oh no, I would lose this. No. Rook f7 after rook capture and two pawns, probably it's winning. <laughs> it's winning. It's a little bit too much. For white, yes, for white. Mm -hmm. yes. Because you will not be able to. Uh, okay, well, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. What is the simplest move to realize the pawn? Promotion, the simplest idea for black, the simplest. Do not think about the advanced one because there is not, not nothing of that. The simplest to help the pawn promote, the simplest and the fastest in the same time. 
Well, actually, if I just play King B2, King B1, and yeah. B2. Yes, but do you, not, do, do, you don't need to play King B1 because you are already protecting the square. Therefore, King B2 and promoting. Right? Uh, you do not need to get. F1. Yes, and Rook F1 is the correct one. Why? Because the king needs to fight against the pawns. Mm -hmm. And if you play King B2, you'll be one tempo short. You'll not have the time to do so. Therefore, Rook F1. Now, the threat is to make the queen. Therefore, white sacrifice the rook and now white pushes the pawn and take notice do you know the rule if there are two pawns on the sixth rank against the rook this is a win um have you heard about such a rule if there are two pawns next to the next to each other on the sixth rank and yes. they are fighting against the rook the side with pawns is winning have you heard yeah, about such I know a rule that, but that's not a case in this situation yeah but why because they're now on the sixth rank. Yes, but they will be pretty soon after just two moves. What about that? Mm, after two moves, they are getting not. into the sixth rank. But I have... Can I just bring the king? Yes, no? you need to have the bring as quickly as possible to stop the spawns from promotion. And that's why one tempo you need to uh, save, otherwise it's lost. I'll just push this, let's say, position because it's pretty simple. Uh, for It's some like obvious moves. And look about this. After the capture, okay. you are in time to catch the pawn because you are getting either g6 or h5 and you are just catching the pawn, right? Okay. And another variation because the other pawn can move forward as well. After g6, king, uh, g sorry, rook g1, king f6, and right here, you can get for the other pawn right there, right here. And now, is it a draw or a win for white? Um, this is the... If white to move, is it a win or a draw? A draw. Yes, a draw. Why is that? Because of uh, if I play like king on h8, mm -hmm. then there's just rook on h6. You mean king h8 right now? Oh, sorry, king h8 in the corner. Okay, king h8. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, it's black smooth. I'm sorry. Um, well, no, I could just like play now rook on, on g, g4 even. Rook g4. And what is the idea behind this move? What do you like, what do you like to achieve? Uh, well, I have to put the pressure on a g7 pawn, so obviously, otherwise they will promote. Well, so, um, so I have to stay on the on the g5 yes and now king gets end. king gets into the g8 square actually no hold on h8 I square actually, no, uh, i could just play rook on g6 rook on g6 okay rook g6 is okay and after king h8 what happens i'm taking the h6 and checkmate that's why i'm promoting into the queen what happens well i'm taking the stalemate yes and stalemate due to this pawn and that's why, yes. that's why at some point you need to learn, probably a little bit earlier, I didn't address that because I, I wanted to show a little bit different type of end games. but now probably you may be convinced that you need to learn how the rook fights against one and two pawns. Because at some end games, you must get into this situation that you are giving up your rook for the opponent's queen, but earlier you just capture one or two pawns okay. or, or, or opponent and then going with your uh, with your pawns as quickly uh, into the promotion line with this type of variation does it make sense okay. yes and that's why at this position just briefly one more time if you didn't capture these two pawns one more time these two pawns f7 and g6 and you will not be able to do so and if you just go here and the promote you will be lost Therefore, just one one tempo at this position, even if it doesn't look like very, let's say, dynamic, but it's very dynamic. Okay. And that's why this is the typical position. Sorry, not rook a4. Rook a4 is a blunder. I don't want you to show the blunder. Uh, a2 here and then rook f1. And this is the situation that you are running with two pawns and your opponent is trying to stop you. Of course, this was another stuff that I wanted to show you and that's why even from so-called simple end games, we need to know when to sacrifice the rook for the pawn, but uh, uh, always you need to have the compensation. Either one or two pawns, the king this is advanced, that is taking the pawns into their pawn motion, uh, otherwise you have the lost position. Okay. Next one? Mm, yes. White to play. Um... How to improve the position? Okay, so how do I improve the position? 
What will be the idea, not just the move? The idea. What, what, what is your biggest asset? What is your biggest strength? My king. Well, your I need... king is a little bit, not that much strength. But what about this guy? No, I know, like the pawn. But yeah. I don't want the... But, but I can't move the pawn. The rook is where it's supposed to be. Kind of. Mm -hmm. So I need a king. Yeah, if you have the king very much advanced, it would be the winning uh, idea because of pushing the pawn. The rook needs to yeah. step back and you will be driving the pawn into the promotion. And now mm -hmm. let's have a look how it happened because I don't want to tire you too much. Just mm -hmm. pretty obvious moves. And now rook is standing on the file and getting the other way. Okay. Look about this. We are just getting into the h7, g6, f5 pawn train, giving up the, our biggest asset, the, the past pawn. Now rook blocks okay. because... If the king blocks, it would be a little bit difficult. And now look mm -hmm. how white into uh, how white uh, break through the position that looks in in a in a uh, not to be broken. Now the pawn f7 is attacked. If you push the pawn forward, the pawn g6 would be protected by the rook. Okay. But black decided to protect that. Now they need to take care about this pawn. If I go here, we are just pushing the pawn way further. And now we are getting into this idea. Can you see that? This is the threat of capturing mm -hmm. the rook. Now they just exchange the pawns. Take notice, they cannot get onto the sixth rank due to the score. Okay. And that's why being cut off in such end games, most of the time it's lost. Because now yeah. at, at this rook moment, they lose another pawn. And then after that, they bring the rook here. The king gets into h5 and the king and the rook with, two, with three pawns is pretty much easily winning. Correct? Mm-hmm. Okay, now let's go into the last part, the test, the test, the test would be pretty quickly, therefore I'll just uh, invite you for the next study, give me a second, and don't worry if you do not, uh, if you are not able to understand everything, because it's not the point, it's rather to give you more clarity, more clarity, and okay, the first uh, one, take notice right. it would be a little bit of speed run, therefore 20 minutes and we are done. Okay, just give me one second, uh, okay. just uh, be back. Now, guys, we will be having the test one uh, positions. I just selected 11 positions for testing the skills of our guest Tosha. And in a moment, we'll see how these positions uh, will be played out or maybe not just play out, but uh, explained by Tosha and see how much she remembers from the part that we learned. Therefore, they are the positions that we analyzed. We just, uh, let's say, uh, learned, uh, bo uh, le learned both. And at the same time, I hope she understands and uh, recognizes these positions pretty quickly. And in 20 minutes, we'll be wrapping up because the stream is going to the fourth hour. And that's why you can see that Tosha is pretty much tired. And therefore, I don't want her to faint. And what about the stream so far? What about the collaboration? Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? Let me know if you have fun and if you just learn something from this one. Great stuff, sorry I missed the beginning. No problem Mike, you can watch it on the on the VOD for 14 days if you wish. And we started with the basics, with very, very basics, and we analyzed one by one, uh, let's say, a little bit more difficult ideas. But at the same time, I tried to share with Tosha the ideas about uh, the, the one that we learned on the stream. Mantarium just popped up in not that long ago. Okay, and if you just pop up, did you like the collaboration? Did you like the positions, analysis, and so on? Am I too late? It depends what you mean by late. We are just 20 minutes up to the end of the collaboration, but it doesn't mean that you're late. I'm back. Okay, now we have the testing positions. Therefore, there are just 11 positions, probably no more than two minutes for each position. Some positions will be pretty quickly, uh, let's say, done by you. Some of them may be a little bit, uh, let's say, slower, but it's perfectly fine. Take notice that I am just testing how much you understood from these positions, and uh, depending on your stamina, it may be less or more. 
but it's not yeah. that much important as the stuff that we have analyzed so far. Yeah, okay. And uh, what, what I mean said in the chat, by the way, tell me now, because they, they delete the message when I came back. That's very rude. Uh, so, okay, let's do a test. Mm -hmm. First of all, if you can tell us, because uh, we are doing with uh, collaboration of two of the audiences, if you can recognize the position or the type of position. Okay, well, this is the... Uh... This position? Yes, maybe I'll just draw the arrow. Can you see that? The arrow? Because yeah. I just invited you oh. for the next study. Oh, okay. Next sorry, study. Sorry, if you sorry, just sorry, click sorry. on the leeches, there is the pop-up, the message, and next stu next study you can click. Oh, that's not it. Yeah. Can sorry. you see the um, can you see the arrows? Oh no, I'm yeah, no, I mean I don't know what you mean. Okay, I mean the arrows this... on the board, because I need to know if you're on yes, the same study. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes, Got yes. It. Okay. And now if you can tell us. First of all, if you recognize this position, what is this position you can recognize? And then the plants. The most important is recognition and the plants. Variations doesn't matter. Okay, so the plants, well, this is the, um, hold on, I'm playing with white, right? So this is the bridge. Yes, the bridge position or the Lucina position. And now yes. can you tell us, is it possible to win this position with using the so-called TikTok's very popular trendy style word, so-called the selfie? selfie? Is it possible to win it or not with the use of selfie? Um, with the use of selfie, no. Why? Because uh, we can't do it on, uh, on the C file because the king is too close uh -huh. and there's not enough space to do on A. Why not? Why not on A file? Why not? There's no way for me to transport the rook. Bravo. You guessed it. And you just passed that. Excellent. I Next one. I didn't guess it. No, no. I passed that. I, I just, I just uh, confused the word. Sorry. I have <laughs> that many words okay. that then sometimes my okay. vocabulary consists of 5,000 words. And from 5,000, I want to put just the one and I put the second one. Sorry if I just missed that. It's not guessing. It's just passing. You pass that because it's the exam. Okay. One more. If you recognize this position, what is this type of position and what should be done? We do not need to even analyze the position because we have already done it. It's just the test. Okay, this position is... Uh, so I'm white and that's failure position and I would play rook a3 in the position. Excellent. Yes, a3. What is the idea behind playing rook a3? Uh, cutting, um, cutting the whole uh, third rank for the king and kind of forcing for e3. Yes, and if the pawn is being happen. pushed, what do you play then? Then I am going back on a8 and doing the checks from behind. Yes, the range of checks. of checks. Excellent. You pass next test. Bravo. Third one. Okay, so that one is I am playing white mm -hmm. and in that position. Is I it a draw am... or win? It's a win. Why? Because I have rook on the g7, king on the h8, rook on the h7, and I have f7. Uh, F7 so why it is what it is win just one one uh, just important because, so this is the pawn if that would be a G pawn or B or A or H it would be a draw mm -hmm. because it's F I have that space over here mm -hmm. to do that what does the pawn F changes just one question what space. what does the pawn gives, changes gives a space for the rook kind like I'd be able to do a maneuver with rook h7, rook h8, Excellent. which yes. I wouldn't be able to. Perfectly do fine. Excellent. The pawn changes that the king cannot protect h8 with the skewer idea. You have mm -hmm. e expressed it a different way, but it was perfectly fine. You passed another position. Congratulations. Next one. Okay, that one is I uh, um, playing white, right? Mm -hmm. On the weaker side. And. I'm basically keeping my rook on the first rank all the time and my king will be... Oh no, hold on. No, no, no. This is actually... No, this is wrong. This is wrong. Because... Closely, closely. Be careful mm -hmm. because it's pretty tricky. No, no. I actually... I'm going to do checks from the behind. Excellent. Why is that? Because... I I can't allow king go on g3, mm -hmm. so I you know and the the king is not, not um, enough able to space. Cover. Mm -hmm. Like he can cover underneath the pawn, mm -hmm. and if in case because obviously I'm leaving the the first rank, mm -hmm. uh, 
but if there be some check on like rook a1 i just go on king on c2 and kind of yeah moving back and forth. excellent and now another question if the pawn would be on f4 and you need to play immediately what move would you play if the pawn is up up a, up well, a rank I, what would you I play would play rook c3 excellent bravo yes you recognize the position that even if the rook is different way sorry different uh, position after pushing the pawn let's pretend rook is here right after the pushing the pawn you are getting on the back rank and make the range of checks correct mm -hmm. and you recognize that even though rook is not on the sixth rank technically the pawn has moved right here right you are just doing the same ideas okay you got the point it yes. means that you integrated the knowledge very well. And I'm serious. I'm very serious about it. You recognize and integrated knowledge very well. Next one. Okay. Well, that's a different situation because it's a draw. Mm -hmm. um, so I assume it's my move, right? I'm mm -hmm. my... So I can play um... the rook. I can just play a rook and b1 and just move my king. Would it be a draw or the lost position after rook b1 and getting back and forth on the first rank? Would it be a win for black or draw for black and why? Um, after rook b1, of course. Right? So let's pretend that rook b1. Is it winning for black or draw? No, it's a draw. Why? Well, because I, I can't see how white could um sorry how black could win this mm -hmm. and if you recognize so there is the h and g pawns that are drawing and we have the g pawn right if the pawn would be on the f file it would be win got it yes okay excellent next one okay that one is i am playing white and what I idea would like to perform well, this is going to be a selfie. Excellent. And I have enough space because king is basically three moves away mm -hmm. from this, uh, from the, sorry, c7. And I am only two moves away mm -hmm. from getting my rook on a c8. Mm -hmm. And then I'm playing. Be careful, rook on there, is, b8. there is one misconception that you uh, integrated. I need to correct immediately. It I is... know, I know, because you, because I said I'm two moves away, but I'm actually three moves away yes, from the yes. But I, my goal is getting my rook on the C8. Yeah, but, but because that before the king gets yeah, on the Yeah, got C7. it, got it. But it would be misconception if you will be tired, if you will be playing, let's say, on the long time and so on. Therefore, we need to correct it. Sorry about it, but we need to do so. You okay. need to always, always at this type of position, count how many moves you reach the b8 square the selfie it doesn't matter what is the root for that unless it's not a blunder you okay. know what i mean therefore mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you go into the h8 square and selfie or if you are going into the d8 and selfie or c8 selfie it doesn't matter what matters you reach the selfie and try to see if your king would be on the position if the selfie is done if your king is already on c7 it's a okay well if you King, that's a draw. Mm -hmm. king and if the king is a little bit far away from c7, but there is a selfie uh, done by white, what then? If the king is right here, let's say, on the d7 or d6, what then? Uh, sorry, I don't understand. Well, if, the, do if the selfie is done by white, yeah. selfie is done by white, and the king, after making the selfie by white, is on d7 or d6, what then? D7 or D6. The squares that I highlighted there's green. There's a bit different technique. Cause but is to... it winning or not? Just is it, it winning? Is... Well, if the king is on the D6, then mm -hmm. I don't know because I can't perform the zigzag. Uh -huh. But if king is on a D7, then yes. Yes. And take notice both are winning. Both are winning. Maybe you may a little bit forgot or maybe there was too, inform too much information. If there is the selfie on the B8 square right here, you are getting outside if the king is maybe just put oh, it yeah, this way. You are get, getting on d8, and if king d7, you are getting on c5. Okay. Correct. Okay. Therefore, the, uh, the if king is on d6, sorry, what am I doing? Yes. If king d6, you are getting if the rook is on the selfie, the king is mm -hmm. on d6. You are getting outside from this square oh, yeah, okay, yes, via sorry, the so c8 yes. d8. Okay. Well, then I made one mistake. Uh huh. And if the king is on d7 and you are just having the selfie, you are getting outside c5 and with the zigzag. Mm -hmm. is, okay. now, is now correct? Yes. Okay, excellent. Next one. Uh, 
Well, I'm plain white, and uh, this one is... Uh, here. What can you recognize with the pawn? With the I pawn? Know, I, well, the pawn is... This is very common feature, therefore I'm just highlighting this because it's yeah, super important so if you just rotate longer. it. Yes. Is the rook on the longer side? Uh, yes. So yes. that's going to be a draw. Take notice. If not exception. Oh, so. No, no, it's okay. okay. It, it's going to be a draw with normal style, if not the exception. If not the exception. Because sometimes there are the exceptions and these are the exceptions. I will help you because you are, okay. pretty, uh, you are uh, working pretty hard. This is the normal procedure. Mm -hmm. Right? And after that, it could be let's say the position that would be drawn if the king would be getting uh, in, in front of the pawn either here or there it would be easy draw but now after the check king here and the attack normally it would be a perpetual not perpetual it would be the threefold repetition right okay because the king is too far away there are three files between the pawn and the rook therefore right. it should be a draw but at this moment it's not going to be a draw due to the king too far away from the pawn Okay. And that's the key. And now, just a little bit of continuation. Look about this. You do not need to protect the pawn because rook is protecting and you are attacking the rook. And now, what is important, now probably you understand why this is the win. The rook cannot stand on the C file on the longer side okay. because of all of the squares are covered. If the rook gets here, it looks uh -huh. like it's a pretty much uh, defense. But after this, rook needs to go and then I push the pawn forward. The king cannot get closer due to the check and winning the rook. Got it? Yes. And that's why okay. it's a win. It is the exception. It's the exception. Normally, it would be a draw. But at some point, if the rook can protect the pawn and the king attacks the rook and rook cannot stay on okay. one of this, on this, uh, let's say, squares, and it cannot get the side checks, it's a, draw. It's a win. Yeah. And therefore, okay. there's slight, slight difference between these positions, and that's why it is one of the reasons that people seem that rook end games are incomprehensible, so like absolutely okay. impossible to learn. And now, at this moment, you probably recognize that you have all of this stuff. After king getting here and pawn here, you are just reaching the Lucina or building the bridge position. Okay, yeah, I know that one. Right. Next yes. one. Um, next one, yes. So that's number eight, right? White to play. Uh, mm -hmm. What are okay. what are white the ideas? Play. I uh, I'm playing white, right? And in this situation, all oh, right. So I have to play king on uh, g two. Mm -hmm. What's the idea behind it? Why king g two? Because I'm trying to prevent rook h one and then rook h two. Excellent. And what about uh, king g two? If your opponent plays rook g one and promoting the pawn? No, because my rook is on a6 and it's controlling. Bravo, it's you passed the five. test. Next one, thank you very much. Thanks. White to play. Okay. I'm not kidding, well, I'm serious. I'm not kidding, I'm serious. Rook White to play. Eight. Yes. Rook eight. What's the idea behind it? The same idea. After rook the capture? Seven. Yes, you are, seven. Yes, and what if black to play, what would be the draw? If black to play? Uh, if black to play, uh, then king on B, uh, B7. Are there any moves that draws? Any other moves than that? If black to play. Any other moves than If black that. to play, are there any moves than king B7 that draws this position? Any other? Um, any other than? Hold on. Black, black can play one, two, three, four, five, and with the rook, this moves. Are there any other moves that makes the position draw except of king b7? No, I can't see any. Excellent, because there are none. It was a tricky position yeah. and tricky question, because this is the only <laughs> okay. idea. If you put sure. the rook here, check, I am attacking the rook and I am just doing this stuff as well. Right? Okay. Therefore, yes. therefore it was a little bit of, let's say, stuff mm -hmm. that I want to test you out. Now, another one. Um, <laughs> right, okay, so now I'm playing white again and I'm... And now the wicker. question, wait a second, the question. Would you rather play rook on the third rank or rook on the eighth rank? Which one would you like? Rook on the um, eighth rank. Rook on the eighth rank. Why not rook gets onto the a3 check? It's a check. Um, Because of C... 
tree and this is the threat of a checkmate. Bravo, you passed that. Thank you very much. Next one, the last one. The last one is not for, uh, <sighs> let's say, um, not for the test, it's rather a little bit for, for the audience, I would say for the content. Now, we most often we have the position that pawn was on the seventh rank, rook was on the eighth. If you cannot have this trick with the uh, skewer, you cannot win this position, correct? Uh -huh. The difference is the king can hide here and it's going to be a win. If not uh -huh. this idea that will be presented, you do not need to, uh, let's say, uh, think. Just watch on the board, it's just one minute. Ready? Okay, yeah, go on. Check. Forcing the king, the pawn cannot move. Now, getting on the sixth rank, attacking the pawn, the rook cannot step back because the pawn is lost. Mm, okay. King closer. What is the threat of black? The threat of black mm -hmm. is... Mm, Look for the four well, simple. I suppose a rook to one. And, uh, no, 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 sorry. <laughs> sorry. So, the threat of black is... Um, mm, you are great. You are doing great content. I'm not <laughs> kidding. You are doing great uh, content. I, 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 well, hold on. Is Rook Juan Rook a good move? <laughs> yes. Yes, it's a perfect move because you force the exchange of the rooks, <laughs> and at the same time, wait a second, Rook Juan check. At the same time, after the capture, the king cannot get into the square of the pawn. Yes. Yes. And that's why this is the threat. That's why Rook is stepping back from the king as far away as possible, but having the pawn over control. Okay. After king got closer, we are doing the Rook F6 again. Sorry, mm -hmm. F, F3 again. Yes. After the check, we are going up, going down. This is the repetition. Mm -hmm. And now check, check, check. And the same idea, the side checks. Can you see that? Yes. We are just attacking all of the time. And if the king gets too far away, we are going rook on the sixth rank. Mm -hmm. And this is drawn. Take so notice that draw. this position, yes, this is a draw. This position with a little bit different configuration would require, and I'm not kidding, explaining for 30 to 40 minutes. I'm not mm -hmm. kidding. Okay. Because we there is the. For that uh, time tonight, anyway. No, 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 no. I mean, <laughs> if this would be the, the necessity. No, not right now, but I mean, if this would be the necessity. That's why I'm not explaining beside this point. Because this I is the simple idea that you probably can grasp easily. And this was the last part of the test and the last part of today's collaboration. And let me know how it went, how it goes from your side. Did you enjoy it? Oh, did you learn something? I did. I did. I, I was a little bit tired at the end, but I managed to, to I put a lot of effort to last at the end to because I wanted to complete it because I know you put a lot of work into that. So I. Uh, you know, <laughs> it was important for me to finish. Uh, but yeah, no, I've uh, I've learned a lot. I mean, there was a lot of a few a good few things I kind of knew, but it be it was nice to go over them mm -hmm. and get, get some explanations because I was kind of learning them more from just like a chessboard or something. But it's it's different when you know mm -hmm. you make the moves yourself. And now the question: What were understand. the most important ideas? Ideas, not just one, not just one, because one probably on TikTok would be super popular, but ideas, mm. at least three, at least three that you learn, not the position, but the ideas, or maybe different perspective, because it's important as well, if you could share uh, with us. Okay, well, the second one, but then another one was the Philidor, which uh, they understand you when to play on the sixth or the third rank, or when to play behind the pawn, which was kind of nice to recognize the difference and then also um and what about short sight and long sight was it helpful yeah, to that was a, see yeah, this yeah, that in was the different perspective idea. that was really good yeah uh or to understand that the rook doesn't always have to be behind the pawn one so yeah works well yeah it. it's very important yes, mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Therefore, we just make it. I am super grateful yes. that you agreed for this collaboration. Sorry if it was a little bit longer than expected, because I expected three hours, but it looks like four hours. I prepared, let's say, more positions, but of course, it is not possible to make that many. But at least if I help you to clear up the misconceptions that you had, at least misconceptions, and to integrate the new knowledge, the new perspective, because sometimes if you just uh, remember, you do not need to use the Lucina, you can use the Selfie. Right? And selfie will yes, be away faster. That was actually good, yeah. yeah, and way easier than just making the Lucina. With Lucina, you can always mess up. 
right? Always. There are some, let's say, intricate, some traps, as you, as you can just see, that you can just mess up. And with the, uh, uh, let's say, idea of uh, selfie and idea of zigzag, you cannot mess up if this is position that you can do. Mm -hmm. What about that? Okay. Well, no, that was, that was a nice thing to, to learn on top of knowing Lucina already. Mm -hmm. So now I know two tricks. Okay. And yeah, I guess it, I guess it would it would be uh, everything for today. I'm super grateful that we could do it. I'm super happy that we just uh, worked pretty hard because it was really interesting experiment for me as well. And I hope I just yes. help you a little bit to see no, this that stuff. No, that was great. I really appreciate it. And uh, you know, like thank you for uh, spending so much time to prepare that. And that that means a lot. <laughs> thank okay. You. Thank you very much. And uh, have a great time and have a great stream. Take care. Yeah, no, thanks. Bye. Okay, bye bye. bye, bye. bye. Thank you. Prophylaxis, great collaboration, Finger Teacher start, stuff starting to sink in for me. Excellent, excellent. I'm happy to hear that. And to be honest, the more I teach the Rook End games, the better I understand them as well. Therefore, probably it's the mutual understanding and mutual love, right? Okay, guys, I hope. We have a great t great stream today. We were having the collaboration with Tosh Queen. Tosha is originally from Poland. Now she lives in Ireland, as far as I know. She's 27 or 26 years, but not 29 for sure, because Marcin just mentioned that I just got her too old. And uh, she's a chess streamer, chess coach, and uh, chess player. Now she's 1900 ELO, the, the real ELO. And if she gets into 2000, if I'm I'm uh, not mistaken, she will become the woman candidate master. And therefore, she is a player, the streamer and the coach. And she wants to become a full-time streamer, if I'm not mistaken. And therefore, it was a good idea to make the collaboration with her and help her to understand these ideas about Rukenkens. Okay, guys, I hope for today it's everything. Thank you very much for all of the support, all of the bits, donations, follows, Shoutouts, Peter's Fiddler's ideas and all of this stuff. I really appreciate it. Have a great time, guys. See you next time.